watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome to Jimmy V Week as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Balvano and his dream to defeat cancer. Folks, we are inside the famed Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Time to move all in. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Oklahoma and the amazing Missouri Tigers. Can you believe it? When you look at the BCS standings, the Tigers are number one. And tonight, a chance to avenge their only defeat of the season at the hands of Oklahoma and Norman. Welcome, everybody, with Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brent Musburger. A little bit later, we'll hear from Lisa Salters and the old linebacker, Chris Bielman, down in the field for us, too. But, Kirk, let us start with Missouri. Can they win the rematch? Well, the last couple times they've gone up against Oklahoma, and the number one problem they've had is protecting the football. They've had eight turnovers in the last two games. So the number one priority for Missouri tonight at Chase Daniel, protect the football, and they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Oklahoma. In fact, I think they gained a lot of confidence the first time around in Norman against the Sooners. And don't forget Sam Bradford. What a quarterback matchup we've got. Wow, this is going to be exciting. If you like offensive football, two of the hottest quarterbacks coming in. Sam Bradford's a quarterback that will have to be able to have his offense establish the run, and then he'll try to go over the top of the Missouri defense by throwing the football downfield to Malcolm Kelly. Now, of course, Chase Daniel. We know all about him. We saw him last week against Kansas. Brent, I don't know if there's a hotter quarterback right now in the country with more confidence and more bravado than what Chase Daniel has to offer this Missouri team. So settle in, folks. The big one is still to come. Who will be headed to New Orleans for the BCS championship? Who will celebrate tonight in San Antonio? This game being broadcast on ABC HD presented by DLP HD TV. So Missouri and Oklahoma about ready to go to war under a roof. Missouri always takes the ball. That has been Gary Pickles M.O. when he wins the toss. And they will do the same here tonight. Now, there are a couple of injury questions, including tight end Chase Kaufman of the Missouri Tigers. Let's go to Lisa Salters for an update. Now, I spoke to Chase Kaufman during warm-ups, and he told me that even though he really wants to play, that he doesn't think he's going to be able to because that right ankle, the one that he re-injured last week in Kansas City, is still very sore. On a pain scale of 1 to 10, he says it's about a 5 when he jogs hurts a lot more when he tries to do anything else. Now the news is better for Oklahoma fans. Defensive end Austin English warmed up with the rest of the team. It looks like he will give it a go tonight. This will be English's first game back since breaking his right ankle earlier this season. You can see that that right ankle will be very, very heavily taped tonight. But Bob Stoops was telling me about an hour ago, he said hopefully once the adrenaline starts flowing, that any lingering soreness that English may feel will be blocked out. And Lisa, for Stoops, sixth title game with OU in the last eight years, and he's won four of five. Familiar territory for him indeed. And for Gary Pinkle, the first time that he has played for the Big 12 championship. Ranked number one. An amazing season, one of those feel-good stories of the year. Fans from both sides are here in force. And right away, Bob Stoops and OU will tip its hand about what they're going to do with Jeremy Macklin, the deep man number nine. Garrett Hartley has put the ball on the tee. Will he coach it? Or will they kick it to him and try to light him up with their great speed on the special team? We're about to find out. They're going to take it his way. Here comes Macklin against the speed of OU. Macklin's got a seam middle out to the 30-yard line. And for Chase Daniel, folks, he came here with the great high school team. Carroll High School from South Lake suffered his only defeat right here, Kirk. Well, Chase Daniel, as I said, one of the hottest quarterbacks in all of college football. Going to go over 4,000 yards tonight on this season. What more can you say? Forget the numbers. The intangibles are so important to Chase in his game. And they turn to him for the leadership for the Tigers. 
Field spread, four receivers, but Tony Temple, 22, who did not play in the first game in Norman, is alongside Chase in the backfield. OU brings five. Drop. Macklin drops the first pass of the game. Now, today's starting lineups presented by Dr. Pepper. Kirk talked about Chase Daniels. We've mentioned Jeremy Macklin. Two fellows who made the All Big 12 team. Well, this is a group of receivers that is as good as I think you, as you'll see in the country. And of course, the big offensive line led by Adam Speaker up front. Second down and ten. Wanted to throw it again, but Nick Harris, an outstanding defensive back for Stoops, read that play all the way, and he blew up Tommy Saunders. What a great play by Harris. Brent, you're exactly right. Nick Harris not only does a great job of reading this play, but getting around Martin Rucker, because of his quickness, he's allowed to do that. But the interesting thing here late is I think Saunders got rid of the football, and because he was outside of the pocket, it is not a, a problem as far as having intentional grounding. It's just an incomplete pass because he was outside of the, the pocket area. Now the officials are talking. They're conferring about exactly what Kirk was reporting. The ball has been spotted back on the 18th yard line. Yeah, they moved them back. What's the referee is Cleet Blakeman. Minus 11. So a terrific play by Nick Harris to start the game defensively. Three down linemen bring a linebacker with them. They've got a rush. They were on Daniels at eight feet. And folks, that's what OU has to do. Bring the heat. Get on him in a hurry. And they did exactly that. Lewis Baker. This is what Chase Daniel will face throughout this game. This is not Kansas's defensive front. Bob Stoops will get very creative along with Brent Venables. And the athletic ability and the speed will force Chase Daniels to rely on running the football more tonight with Tony Temple and then moving the pocket from side to side. He cannot sit back in the pocket against the Sooners. And Reynolds was on the blitz as the linebacker that time. So Venables and Stoops bring in heat from a variety of spots. Adam Crosett back to punt they have two deep men the Sooners do Smith and Franks are both back deep no, 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 no. beautiful punt fielded back on the 24 by Smith and Smith is thrown down at the 34 yard line William Moore getting there on that special team. He's a star on that unit. He'll be out there defensively for him. So here's Sam Bradford. When Bradford comes into this game. Remember, only a freshman. And look at the year that Sam Bradford has had. As much as people want to talk about Chase Daniel, I think you have to look at Sam Bradford as a first-year starting quarterback and be very impressed with his poise. As Reggie Smith here walks off a little gingerly there for the Sooners. And that would be a big blow to that secondary. He's one of the corners being tended to on the OU sideline. First down and 10. They show a power eye, the Sooners do, to start the game and throw out of it. And he completes his first pass to Iglesias and Iglesias still going. A powerful run after the catch for a first down plus. Love the call by Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator. All they talked about this week was running the football and getting physical. And last week against Oklahoma State, that's what they did. So what do they do? Quick pass out to Inglesias, out of the eye formation. I think they catch Missouri napping a bit because they were expecting the run from Alan Patrick. Kelly and Iglesias are both off to the left on his first and 10 from the Sooners 46. Back with the running game. Patrick, the ball carrier, and our OU offense. Kirk, of course, has already talked about Bradford. Sam Bradford setting records as a freshman quarterback. But how about Brody Eldridge? The coaches put him on the all Big 12 team. And I think watching the development of this offensive line tonight, Kevin Wilson, the offense coordinator, really got after them last week against Oklahoma State, and they responded. He challenged them again tonight. They need to be physical to open up the running lanes. 
Duke Robinson on the old Big 12 team. They flare Patrick for a loss. Read beautifully on that play by William Moore. What a safety he is. I noted that he wasn't on the first team defense of the Big 12. Folks, I've got to tell you, I'm surprised. I've only seen him a couple of games. Brent, what a great instinct. Brent, you and I, the last two weeks, we've fallen in love with William Moore. Number one, and think about this, since Pig Brown has gone down with an injury, William Moore has taken his game to a different level, not only reading the play, but great athletic ability to make that play in open space. Here's third and long now for Bradford and the Sooners. Base defense and the Sooners shift out of it. Penalty flag. Might not have gotten it off. The clock was winding down. You could see that Bradford had to check his wristband. Play of game on the offense. The five yard penalty. Missouri and Kansas in the Big 12 are known for the look offense where they look over to the sideline in a rare occasion Sam Bradford on third down and long looking over to get confirmation and then trying to go to the audible and once he did the play clock had run out now third and 18 and Bradford checking the call over from the sideline Needs to reach Mizzou's 43 for a first down and false start. That's going to be Lone Holt to left tackle. Looked like he moved a little bit. start in the offense, number 79. It's a five yard penalty. Still third down. When he moves, Kirk, you can't miss it. He's 6'8, <laughs> 352. He gets away with nothing, folks. 6'8, 352 pounds and a left tackle, and the crowd. Even though it's bipartisan, this crowd, this ain't loud. Oh, dome. Very loud. It will affect the offensive line and it will affect the communication. He is a horse. Makes it third and 23 for Bradford. Incomplete. And the Sooners are forced to punt it back to Missouri. It's a little thing here early in this game, but the emotions of a championship game with a team like Oklahoma is used to being around, that was an important stop for this Missouri defense to get the ball back to Chase Daniel. Mike Knoll took over as the punter a couple games ago, and there's number nine now, Jeremy Macklin. Under pressure that time, and Macklin's going to let this one bounce into the end zone. It'll come out on the 20 yard line. Chase Daniel and the Tigers are about to have the ball for the second time tonight when we come back. The Big 12 championship game, and the number one team in the land, Missouri, win tonight, and they go to New Orleans to play for the BCS championship. So Chase Daniel came in with a hot hand, Kirk, but in that first series against OU, they got on him. Well, they're going to get on him all night. It's going to be interesting to see how Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, retaliates because they expected that from this Sooner defense. And they twist it beautifully into the run. They read that perfectly and took down Temple rather easily with Jeremy Beal. And uh, I told you it was a hot hand. Yeah, I mean, does it get much better than that? The last three weeks, far right column is always the most impressive. When you see 10 touchdowns and no interceptions at 40 of 49. You know, the coaches say in practice, the ball rarely touches the ground. Well, they Seven have to settle into this. They dropped his first pass. He's 0 of 2 so far tonight. Like having a coach on the field, that's how well he knows this offense. This is what he played at Carroll High School in South Lake. Here comes a blitz. And they call a bubble screen, but well short of the first and ten that time. As this OU defense has been ready. Franklin was the receiver that time. And here you see the big man, Austin English. How will he hold up 
out on the field right now, number 33, a lineup at right defensive end. Curtis Lofton, the defensive player of the year. And then in the secondary, folks, they got two who made the All Big 12 team, but the coach says DJ Wolf has had the best year. Third down for Daniel and Mizzou. Gets it off. There's their initial first and 10 as he's able to fire it downfield. His second completion of the night, Macklin, the receiver. There's the accuracy of Chase Daniel. In fact, his first pass went right through the hands of an intended receiver. This time, Macklin, one-on-one -on -one in its zone against Lewis Baker, who's got great speed. But if you're Chase Daniel and you look out and you see one of your top players, Macklin, isolated with a linebacker, you'll take it every time. But not many yards after that catch. All right, folks, OU speed. Throwing short passes again. Macklin could not break the tackle of D.J. Wolf. Wolf was hanging on. Is he shaken up on the play? He has not gotten up. 25 is down and injured. Brent, you're right. Wolf was holding on, just trying to hold on to Macklin to allow the rest of the team to get there. And as he did that, you don't know if he's he had his shoulder or a hand, but all I saw was number 16, Lewis Baker, come right over the top and right through Macklin at the end of the play. Ferocious hit. And Macklin did get up, but Wolf is still down. This a big blow because, as we just reported, Bob Stoops thinks he's had the best year of any of his defensive backs in terms of making plays, making things happen. And we'll take a break right now. Mizzou and Oklahoma are scoreless in San Antonio. There's the sub. Darian Williams has checked into the game for Wolf, who's on the sideline. Daniel incomplete. And Wolf over on the sideline. Folks, I didn't know that Brian Bosworth had opened up a barber shop down in. Uh, down in that's a little bit even better than the box. I mean, that's, well, that's, a, that's a more awkward that, design, man. That's that's you got to give him the design takes it kind of to the next level there with the Mohawk look, which is kind of the big trend this year throughout the country. All right, here's your third down, folks. I am very impressed by how close the Sooners are getting on every play with this defensive speed. Option. No way. Mizzou forced a punt. They lit him up, and there's the defensive player of the year in the Big 12. Mr. Curtis Lofton take a bow, 133 tackles. Well, Dodson takes the pitch, which means he Chase Daniel has no other choice but to cut it up underneath. That's his read. 91 takes the pitch. Temple, he's got to cut it underneath. The problem is Curtis Lofton, one of the best linebackers in the country, was right there to take Chase Daniel down. The school that produced Rocky Kalmus, Teddy Lane. And Stoops will tell you, we've never had a middle linebacker produce like Lofton has. Another great punt inside the 15. Here comes Reggie Smith looking for a seam. And he's down around the 30-yard line. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Oh, yes. And did, everybody told did, me. Did he just no say problem. tied up at zero? No problem for West Virginia. Woo. Folks, when everybody... In the sports universe, I don't care what it is, tells you one thing, say, oops, hang on, something else might happen here. But in a year <laughs> where you expect the unexpected, I thought if there was a lot, it was West Virginia just pounding pit. The fact, and it still could end up that way. The fact that it's zero to zero with a couple missed field goals, I'm shocked. I know it's only the second quarter, but I'm shocked. I thought it'd get ugly. You know, Moore was shaken up on that special team. And that means that Dell Howard, now Howard played a lot of snaps up in Kansas City against Kansas. So Dell Howard comes in along with Justin Garrett as the safeties. You can see them lining up in too deep back there, but that would be a big loss if he stays out for very long. First and 10, complete. A soft pass to Kelly. Malcolm Kelly. And the corner was way off on that side. That was easy for Bradford. Well, what Missouri is doing right now, even with William Moore out, Garrett moves over to this other safety spot, and he's more physical than Dell Howard. And Missouri, on early downs, they're walking eight guys, sometimes nine guys up in the box to stop the running game of Oklahoma and Alan Patrick. And right now, the Sooners are throwing against that to try to get them to soften that up. 
Mizzou shows blitz, and here they come. And they surround Patrick, eating up on the play. And getting there was Charles Gaines, a senior defensive lineman. There's a flag down. Flag comes in late, but you can see all the black jerseys up tight towards the line of scrimmage. The thought process by Missouri is stop the running game first and take your chances out against the perimeter on the passing game. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense, number 71. The 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, third down. That is Trent Williams. He lines up behind Brandon Braxton at that tackle spot. So Trent Williams commits the personal foul. I was talking to the officiating crew, and I said, guys, I, I got a feeling th this game has the potential to get a little chippy. Both these teams have a lot to prove tonight. Both are going to come in with a pretty tenacious attitude. And they said they're going to let them play as much as they can, but at some point they've got to draw a line. Chris Brown. We had a big game against Missouri. He's come on the field as the running back. And Joe John Finley, the tight end, with his first catch of the night, trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. So far, Missouri's tactic of loading up the line of scrimmage to stop Allen Patrick in the running game, working out, taking chances out on the, again, on the edge, one on one against Malcolm Kelly and Joaquin Iglesias. There we go. Nall against Macklin again. Missouri can wind up in its best starting field position of the night. It'll be up to Nall to see if he can drive Macklin back. Booms it. Macklin retreats to the 23. Looking for an alley on the right side. There's a penalty flag, however. Probably an illegal block on that side, and another penalty comes flying. Yeah, I saw that. Alan Patrick with a little bit of a cheap shot after the whistle. Coaches are very unhappy with it, too. I mean, Stoopson, they're all over him on that far side, and Gundy, this is what they did not want. They had him in a good situation. It's a dead ball foul. That's what the officials are discussing. The Absolutely. play was well over. Way away from the football. And Patrick took a shot. We may be seeing Brown as a running back at the start of the next <laughs> series. Could be. He had the big game last time out. Bob Stoops trying to challenge the troops a little bit. The clip is going to be on 33. Lambert from Missouri. But the dead ball foul comes into play. There are fouls against both teams on the play. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 40 against the return team. That penalty be assessed 10 yards from the end of the run. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 23 for Oklahoma. And he marked 15 yards from the spot, first down. So they gain a few yards. And Stoops not happy. Pinko will take it. We'll catch up with Chase Daniel when you come back. Well, Kirk, I know that on uh, game day earlier today, you reported that he would become the next head coach at Michigan, but things seem to be turning the other way. Yeah, I, I, this morning on game day, I talked about having a lot of sources close to that situation who said he was headed to Ann Arbor. And I think it's interesting that LSU had an impromptu press conference with, with Les and the media. We'll talk about it in a second. Yeah, Chase Daniel completes it to Macklin. Macklin with that great speed, and he is out of bounds close to midfield. Let's go back. We want to put a button on this with Les Miles because just a short time ago, after LSU won the SEC championship in dramatic fashion over Tennessee, he said in the news conference, we are told anyhow, we haven't seen it, we are told he said no wiggle room. I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, and what, what I was saying is, I, I, for me to talk about something on the air, I felt very confident and still feel very confident that somebody close to the situation said he was going to go to Michigan. I think LSU reacted to that and beat. I think they beat Michigan to the punch, had their press conference, and reached a long-term agreement with Les Miles. And now either he's long-term locked in with LSU, or there was a little bit of a smokescreen there to get through this game. 
and then try to end up going to Michigan. Who knows? In a few a few days or a week, we'll know for sure. He'd have to walk the same branch that Nick Saban walked to get to Ann Arbor. Or, or the same branch he left right. from Oklahoma Let's State back. to LSU. Let's get back to the Big 12 championship game now. Here comes Daniel firing a screen to Macklin and Macklin. Back to the line of scrimmage, and again, the Sooners are all over number nine. Well, they are going to be all over him throughout this game, Brent. It's, it's not only the speed, but it's disguising their looks, blitzing from different angles, trying to confuse the offensive line, and trying to get after and get into the mind of Chase Daniel. The, the way that I'm seeing Missouri respond is not just quick throws, moving the pocket, and I still feel you'll see Tony Temple, number 22, who missed the first game against the Sooners, still come into play to try to slow down that pass rush third and three can Daniel and the Tigers pick it up high and incomplete they cannot and a flag on the play and Stoops unhappy with this call against Franks he said there's no way that this was interference Pass interference on the defense, number 15. The ball is placed at the spot, automatic first down. And Bob Stoops is livid right now. He had right what I'm seeing is Martin Rucker at six feet, six feet, six inches, matched up with Franks at 5'10. He's got to win that battle. The ball is high. Questionable call there. I Questionable call. It was I Did thought you? he wrapped him and hooked him with that left arm. Daniel. Great fake, and this time he catches Rucker underneath. Cross the 25 to the 22-yard line. This is the other way you try to slow down an aggressive Oklahoma defense. Receivers, whether it's Macklin or this time Alexander, look at the ball fake, taking his time, showing the poise, entrusting Rucker coming underneath. That's the thing. If you could give Chase Daniel time, there are holes in this Oklahoma secondary. First down and 10. Daniel changes up as he sees something out there. Nick Harris back on the field. Harris wants to blitz. Daniel Reddick runs the other way with Temple. And Temple across the 20, close to the 15-yard line, and McCoy makes the stop. I'm going to tell you, Daniel sees everything out there. He pointed right at number five as he walked up to the line of scrimmage. Such a comfort level for Chase Daniel in this offense. He ran a similar offense in high school at South Lake Carroll. And now you watch him, and you watch his decision-making. He's in such a groove. He's almost like having an offensive coordinator out on the field making decisions. He doesn't have to look up into the stands to Dave Christensen. He's got the mind right out there on the field making the plays. Second and four. They spread the field. Temple on a cutback at the first and ten. Down at the just across the ten yard line. There's the young man who didn't play in game one and DJ Wolf. Which is See that he's back on the field, making the stop for OU. All of a sudden, the offensive line starting to feel very good about themselves. Llewellyn on the left side, Ryan Madison, 76. Some movement. If you allow Missouri's offensive line to pull and get angles on an athletic defense, they'll get to the next level. And I'm telling you right now, Tony Temple and his physical style of running, he's quick, he's shifty, he's a great complement to the spread look of Missouri. First and goal for the Tigers. Nothing doing on this. This was botched. So it'll be second down and goal. I saw Tony Temple last week, and when he's in the football game, they just seem to have a different rhythm to him. Very anxious to have his chance to get on this field to take a chance against this Oklahoma Sooner defense. Now they spread it out with five receivers as Macklin returns and Temple watches. And this is where he's got to get rid of the ball in a hurry. Second and goal. Let's see what OU tries to do here. Show blitz. They're coming. Gets it off in time at the five yard line to Rucker. Incomplete. The official was right there, saw the ball, hit the artificial surface here, and uh, that should bring up third down for him. What Chase Daniel looks for down inside this red zone area 
is the one-on-one -on -one matchup that works to his advantage. And Brent, these teams are going to settle down and these offenses are going to score. And when you get opportunities in the red zone, you've got to score touchdowns. You cannot settle for field goals. Jimmy Jackson is 30. Backup running back. He's going to come in right next to Daniel. They're going to fake it. Throw end zone high. Incomplete. Now, that probably will signal Jeff Wolford to trot onto the field here and attempt a field goal. Folks, Wolford has an amazing, an amazing record going. He has never, as in ever, missed a kick in Big 12 play. 87 straight field goals and extra points. I mean, this former diver is doing a sensational job. Tommy Saunders is his holder. Don't let him jinx you, Jeff. Lock in, kid. <laughs> Twenty nine ah. yarder. Woo. It's eighty eight straight. Chase Daniel will take the field goal, but he's frustrated at the inability to strike for the touchdown. Mizzou leads it by three. So we welcome you back to the uh, Alamo Dome while you were gone. Chris Spielman and Kirk Herbstreit were discussing some of the things that they have seen so far in this game and some of the adjustments that Missouri has made and from time to time we'll be checking in down on the field with Chris to uh, see what his insights are. Wolfer with the ball on the tee. Fielded from the nine and here comes Patrick. He owes Stoops one. <laughs> he does. Because of the penalty. And uh, Chris, uh, from down there, your vision down on the field, what are you seeing? Well, one of the things Missouri's doing, Brent, is they're throwing that quick outside screen, and that's slowing down the pass rush of the defensive ends. Now, what I like to see both teams do on first and second down, you got to start slinging the rock down the field a little bit to open up the running game. They're not throwing it on first and second down. And Oklahoma is doing a great job of alternating their defensive linemen. And on pass rush, they are beating the Missouri offensive line off the ball. Keep your eye on Moldholt. He's sucking air right now. He's going to be struggling a little bit out there. Slant incomplete. You got to be careful with Spielman on the sideline. He looks like he wants to go out and bop somebody. <laughs> I, I think he is. I think he's about to strap up, lace up the shoes, and get out there and hit somebody. Oh boy, it's a different ball game down here. And I'll tell you this: if I'm Oklahoma, I do not kick the ball to Macklin anymore. You don't appreciate his speed until it's uh, flying by you with flames coming from his heat. He can put him up the, and let him go, the, man. The problem feels that you forget who the head coach is over there in white. He's not afraid of anybody. Maybe it'll backfire on him. We'll see. <laughs> he's a brilliant coach, but he's not stupid. <laughs> Brown is the running back, and the pass was complete to Joe John Finley, his second reception of the night. Out of bounds in front of the Stoops bench on that side, Kirk. And we talked a, about a, a series or two about the importance of Oklahoma's ability to throw because Missouri's loading up the box with eight different defenders, very cognizant of Alan Patrick. Remember, the Sooners are coming off a game last week against Oklahoma State, Bedlam, where they ran for 307 yards. They got physical, they got challenged, and Missouri's aware of that, so they're taking that part of the game away or trying to. Third and four. Plenty of time complete for the first down if he gets this spot, and I believe he will get it as Chris Brown, the running back, his first reception of the night. And Witherspoon, fine linebacker for the Tigers, makes the play. It's the kind of night the start that Sam Bradford is off to right now. He hasn't done anything spectacular, but he's completing passes and he's making reads and he's not making mistakes. We talked a lot about it this week. Which quarterback would avoid the turnover? Which offense would avoid the turnover? You have two quarterbacks coming in making great decisions and Bradford there just dumping it down to Brown allowed them to pick the first down. Pleasant's the fullback on this eye. He will lead the way for Brown. Brown got the most out of that run. Four tough yards, and William Moore back on the field makes the stop. Important for William Moore to be back out there. Not only is he a playmaker, but talking about putting a lot of people up close to the line of scrimmage, William Moore is the epitome of that attitude. And he is probably the most physical defensive back that Missouri has. Now the pick Brown is out for the year. They've got 10 guys within five yards. 
Second and seven. Play fake. Bradford going downfield. Got Kelly open. And he pulls it in. It was overthrown a bit or he'd have walked into the end zone. It was a fine catch by Kelly. When you put nine and ten guys up to the line of scrimmage, you leave yourself vulnerable one-on-one. -on -one. Malcolm Kelly against Terrell. And again, that is a matchup that Kelly can win every time. He's such a long strider. He just ran away from Terrell. And Bradford did a good job of leading Kelly downfield. That is a huge, our first huge play tonight for either offense. 47 yards. There are tight ends on the field now. Grisham really an H-back look as he's flexed off the line there. Number 18, he's a fine talent. And this is Brown. Number 29 has stayed on the field as the running back. It'll, it'll end up being a cat and mouse game between the two coordinators. Missouri's defensive coordinator, Matt Eberflus, and the offensive coordinator from Oklahoma, Kevin Wilson, on when to take those chances, and by taking that chance, it forces Missouri to be cognizant of that and get their safeties back to respect that aspect of the Sooners' offense, and then the Sooners can get back to the bread and butter of running the football. Second down and goal for the Sooners. Again, left yeah, tackle. Left tackle. Load hole. You He's gotta, flinching over there. He's a load. Load hole. Yes, he is. Well named youngster. Full start on the offense, number 79. The five yard penalty, still second down. That's a killer down there inside the 10 yard line. When you back him up like this, it really changes what Kevin Wilson calls in this situation. Already six penalties tonight on the Sooners. Six. Not even into the second quarter. And only one on the Tigers here. Second down and goal. Bradford drops it off. Short of the end zone is Joe John Finley. He's been his favorite target here tonight. Time runs out on the first quarter. Oklahoma threatening, but Missouri leads it by a field goal. Here's third and four, and uh, both Kirk and Chris agree. Watch for number 18, Jermaine Gresham. He scored 10 touchdowns on the season for OU. Remember Chris Brown in the first matchup between the Sooners and Missouri, also three touchdowns. He's tough in this area as well. If they get the numbers, they can run him. Here he comes, end zone touchdown, just as you called. Brown, who had a big day. 13 for 67 yards along with those three TDs, and he bounces in to put the Sooners up for the first time tonight. There are two players when you talk to the Sooners coaching staff that they you can tell they're very excited about DJ Wolf on the defensive side and then Chris Brown the sophomore tailback who as far as the media is concerned has taken a back seat this year to Marco Murray who's out for the year and Alan Patrick and Brown steps in there for a big score. Now Garrett Hartley on for the extra point. This has not been automatic all season long. Mm, that was perfect. I mean that's all right. Downtown, wasn't it? As Brown scores the touchdown, Hartley adds the extra point. Great blocking on the left side and a seal block this time by Joe, Joe John Finley. And the vision that you see from Brown, he has an ability to pick, make, pick the lane that he likes. He likes the cutback. And because Finley sealed that to the backside, plenty of room for Brown to go in untouched. Something about Chris Brown and going up against the Missouri Tigers. The schooner's rolling right now. Up to the Tigers for the spot. Let's keep track of these two teams when they get in the red zone. Who comes away with the touchdowns and who has to settle for the field goals? So Missouri averaging 41.9 points a game. And OU averaging 43.8. Right now it's 7 3 just inside, just starting the second quarter down here at the Alamo Dome. And there's the speedster. The redshirt freshman missed all of last year because of a knee injury from Missouri. Macklin's back deep.
two yards deep in the end zone. Macklin cuts back. And he is down short of the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Remember, Jared Brown, a lot of experience there as a backup. He's played in some big games for the Mountaineers. Complete and blown up. Nothing doing for Saunders on that reception as OU has read this pass attack beautifully. Brent Venables and the rest of the coaches on the defensive side have really had the Sooners ready for Chase Daniel. To watch Missouri last week against Kansas's defense and then to watch him tonight, you could tell how much they respect Brent Venables and the Oklahoma defense and the speed. I think eventually they are going to have to take some shots and try to find some seams and also play action. You could still go after an aggressive defense with play action and throw over top of them. Moving the pocket to the left. Can't find anybody open. Throws it away. Incomplete as Rucker was breaking after Chase had uh, decided he's got to get it out of there. And uh, they moved the pocket that time to the left. But what we didn't see in the Kansas game, we're seeing in the Sooners game, Oklahoma getting on number 10 in a hurry. Well, they're not only getting on him and chasing him, but they're taking every opportunity that they can to physically make Chase Daniel feel their presence. Even if they don't get the sack, they're trying to hit him. And that was English, the injured defensive end, who means so much to that defensive line. Number 33, hairline fracture. Missed three games. He's trying to get past that offensive line. Daniel throws high and complete. A first and ten to Saunders. Big time third down pass. 21 yard gain. Well, it started with the offensive line picking up the blitz and then the bust here by Marcus Walker who goes. He sinks to the inside on the slot receiver and completely loses Tommy Saunders who comes up with a big game. Great recognition by Chase Daniel. First and ten. Temple battles his way. Just watching the movement of this Sooner defense. We're talking about a group that right now looks dialed in, very, very familiar with what they need to do as far as filling the gaps, running to the football, great pacing and great attitude from this Sooner defense. And it's a defense for the most part has played very consistent with the exception of the Texas Tech game. Daniel 8 of 14 for 70 yards. End around this time. They put the speedster to work for a first and 10. Macklin coming around. He was able to score down in Norman on that end around. Another blitz here by Oklahoma. They're changing up the looks. Great block right to the right here by number one, Jimmy Jackson. That opened it up and with the speed that Macklin has after the blitz by Baker got picked up by Jackson. It was it allowed Macklin to get to the corner and to pick up another first down for Missouri. Tigers inside the Sooners 45. Anytime he's an empty, it's going to be a quick throw. He's got to get rid of the football. Four-man rush. They twist. Moves the pocket hard to the right on the move. He'll have to put it down and take off. Intelligence, savvy, poise. Chase Daniel, we just talked, Brent, about in an empty set. There are no backs back there to help. And with the Sooners one-on-one, -on -one, they're able to get by Missouri's offensive line. And instead of throwing it away, instead of taking the loss, he uses the speed and shows his versatility to pick up a nice game. So the eight yards makes it second and two. Temple. Spins and he's short of the first down because of Reggie Smith's hit. We just talked I don't about mind up there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, boys, yep. he brought the plastic. Well, they, they are blitzing and they are coming up, and this time catching Tony Temple in a spin move. He's up in the air, and you don't want to do that against this secondary when they're closing in. That time it's Reggie Smith. 
whether it's the, the corners or the safeties for this secondary, they're all about 5'11", 6 feet tall, and about 195 to 200 pounds. Interchangeable parts. You know, when I saw it live, I didn't think he got the first and 10, but uh, the spot was, uh, was pretty good here. And... Uh, Yeah, okay, we were right. Sometimes the naked eye of an old man fails, folks. Oh. <laughs> I was going to have the AARP excuse on that oh, one. No. I would have missed that one. No, you're all over. <laughs> now it's third down and, uh, and one coming up for Pinkle and uh, Mizzou. Seven play drive so far. Missouri, it just seems that this is such an up-tempo offense. First downs are important to keep the defense on their heels. They want to dictate the tempo and not let this Sooner defense come after them. Spread the field. You can see the receivers out wide. Daniel going to keep it himself for a first and ten. The middle is open up. And Daniel crosses the 15-yard line. Five wide receivers spreads the seat, the defense all over the field. All you'll see is four Oklahoma Sooners down inside this area right here. Chase Daniel recognizes that and right away just decides to pick it up and take off with the football and a huge gain. And the guy's got some quickness when he decides to run the football. 21 yard gain. He's carried three times for 26 yards. Now Temple spreads wide and uh, Big number 40 was closing in on him that time before he's out on the on the far side. And again, Missouri threatening. Remember, they've been down here before, had to settle for the field goal. Well, those big gaps coming into play here when they're trying to run the ball with Temple and talk all the time when it comes to Missouri, how far their splits are with their offensive linemen. And on that third down, or the big run there by Chase Daniel, he saw those seams and took off. Second and seven. Derek Washington checks in as the running back, number 24. Zone block Washington and nothing doing. He loses three yards on the play. Brings up a third down for Daniel. What a great play by Austin English on the backside. Playing with a hairline fracture in his ankle. Shows that he is not only quick when it comes to rushing Chase Daniel, but he can get physical. And that time dominated the line of scrimmage and forced the ball carrier to bounce it to the outside. And when you bounce it to the outside, there's just too much speed on this center defense. Nine and a half sacks for English. He leads the Big 12 in that category. Third and nine. Needs to reach the five for a first down. Here comes the blitz. Daniel gets it off. Is that going to be interference? They look at each other. The linesman throws it. He couldn't get the yellow flag out of his pocket. I was watching him live. Over here on the sideline, he wanted to call it, and he couldn't get it out. It's on Walker. Automatic first down. That's the second time Bob Stoops has seen a call. That's interference. On the defense, from the five. Bobby plays with the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Second time he's seen a pass interference call go against him. The Sooners brought the blitz right into the face of Chase Daniel. That's why the ball was high. Lofton, the linebacker, gets there. The ball comes in high, and let's see if Walker comes in and gets to Alexander. Thought he hooked him again with the left hand. If anything, it's the left hand, but it was not the contact with the chest. But he is using that, that, that same technique with his left hand around the waist. They gave the wrong number. Daniel going to keep it again. Right up to the middle, to the end zone. No signal yet. I thought he might have gotten there, and they're going to mark it, apparently. Instant replay. Probably going to take a look at this one. This was close, folks. Real close here. Once again, Chase Daniel, this is a great job of just going in attacking this defense. I'm going to tell you what. Yeah, it was. I think they'll stop it. Yeah, Take they, a look at that. You would think they, it's close enough to stop. They're going to go to the pistol formation if they have to run. And they toss on the pistol. Bang, and that one is short. 
That was Jimmy Jackson who checked into the backfield. They like to use him in those power running situations down there. And uh, I'm rather surprised that the call didn't come down to give the booth more time to look at that. Regardless, it was right up on the end zone. But here we go again now for Mizzou. It is third and goal. And I'm sure OU this time is going to be looking for Daniel taking off on this. Oklahoma's expecting that already pinching in with their safeties and linebackers. Here he comes. Real short that time. Never a chance. Fool me twice. Shame on us. <laughs> Fool me three times and he'll change the linebackers. Granger, his quickness 96 gets in there to penetrate. And how about Lofton coming off the slot receiver? expecting the run from Chase Daniel and took it away. So the close call on the long run by Daniel, the Sooners defense steps up and forces the field goal. Wolford on to attempt his second field goal. 88 consecutive field goals or extra points in Big 12 play. Adds another one. He's automatic, but Again, the Tigers failed to score a touchdown. OU has to feel good about this situation so far. Well, the offense huddling around, and uh, my apologies to the booth upstairs. Clearly, Daniel did not get into the end zone. Watch him from this angle wrap the ball up as he goes down, and he is short of the goal line and uh, Chris Spielman was right there on the line and he said that was a good call down there so that we could see that there was no need to stop this game and uh, their eyes upstairs were better than mine. And what a third down stop. What an effort by Granger and Lofton expecting some kind of run there by Chase Daniel but Missouri in their last two drives having to settle for field goals that could be very very important as this game goes on 10 plays down to the Oklahoma 11 they settled for a field goal in this past drive 14 plays down to the one and another field goal yeah they had two first and goals down there and uh, this one is fielded at the five by Patrick and it is time for the Dr. Pepper stats update and we can see what has uh, unfolded here so far two field goals for Mizzou and the one touchdown for OU. Well, the shocking thing to me is to look at the rushing yards for Oklahoma and the passing yards Missouri trying to stop the running game Oklahoma's adjustment is to throw the football downfield and if you look at right now the penalties Oklahoma's got to settle in here and start to play smarter football they cannot continue to self destruct. Patrick is back as the running back. The call. Strong run. And let's check in down below with Lisa. Well, Brent, Chase Daniel was over here on the bench fuming. He was just uh, so upset. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, upset about the. Uh, about the situation is uh, Lisa was talking to a lot more folks than she anticipated. <laughs> I think she went PA there. For yeah, a second. I think that. Uh, whoa, Chase looked over there and said, "Who's talking about me like that on the PA, man?" There's a first and ten, and of course, Lisa is getting ready for uh, for a halftime contest, the Dr. Pepper contest, and uh, she will be on the uh, PA system down there. And I suspect that uh, when they checked it through the PA, that they inadvertently left it back I, on. I was watching this afternoon, and I think it was the ACC championship game, and one of these guys had a chance to really throw the football well, and he came close to winning a million dollars. Really? Yeah, it was pretty cool to watch that. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with Lisa here. First and ten. And now Brown back on the field. Once again, Missouri first and ten. I think you're going to see Oklahoma go back to that. I really believe that Kevin Wilson has his quarterback right now saying, let's just be patient with those shots downfield. It's going to come. And in the meantime, Let's just continue to run the football and do what we do well, and then we'll get back to getting that one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Here's a look at Kevin Wilson, fine offensive coordinator for the Sooners. Second and eight.
play fake penalty is going to be called on this play. Plays whistle dead. So that would be what number eight. Ball start on the offense. Number 18. The five yard penalty. Still second down. 63 yards. Eight penalties to one in this game and uh, Stoops cannot be happy about that particular number. That, that is something that you would not expect to see from Bob Stoops coming into this championship game unacceptable in this first half. Missouri's a team that struggled with that a week ago in a game with Kansas but they had nine penalties but they buttoned it up so far tonight. Here comes the blitz. Bradford runs away from it throws complete on that far side to Iglesias. Is Josh Heupel the quarterback coach a few words of encouragement for Sam Bradford How about Bradford he also showing some niftiness some quickness to be able to pull away from Tommy Chavis and then get it downfield to Iglesias it's Josh Heupel what a quarterback he was Brent you caught a lot of his big games sure did third down and three back as the running back play fake Bradford goes downfield and lit up by Moore Gresham had it for a moment and took a big time shot from number one watch this corner right here because that's what Sam Bradford is looking into right there when the corner comes up to take the flat defender he's trying to throw the ball right here but what a great job of taking it away by the safety William Moore to separate Grisham from the football nice play no punting and number nine back deep Macklin fair catches inside the 15 at the 14 yard line the Big 12 championship number one Missouri trails favored Oklahoma by one pretty familiar sight and a couple fellows who've come to the shadow of the Alamo there are contestants of the Dr. Pepper competition that we'll have at halftime here of the Big 12 championship Chase Daniel trying to move the Tigers again can't find an open receiver and he has to throw it away it'll be second down and 10 and the OU defense has been the story of the first half they have made the difference in this game twice they have had to stop Missouri's high powered offense inside the red zone and the Tigers have settled for field goals that'll start to mount that'll start to add up on an offense Washington now the running back. Macklin shows in the round. Fake to him. Incomplete. He was well <laughs> covered on that far side as he came around. When you're Jeremy Macklin, I don't care where you go in motion or how you try to hide him, there's always going to be a white jersey trying to follow him. Now, he might not always make the play, but as Gary Pinkle tries to come up with unique ways to get the ball to Jeremy Macklin, it's going to become tougher and tougher to do, and they're going to have to find other receivers to try to get the ball downfield against Oklahoma. Denario Alexander has disappeared, and he had a big, big game against Kansas. Jimmy Jackson is now the running back. OU's got him in third and ten. Here they come with the blitz. Harris is picked up. Daniel can't get an open receiver. Comes back near side. Out of bounds. Force him to punt with 6.56 to go in a half. And the OU defense under Brent Venables is doing its job here tonight. Well, they stepped up here and forced a three and out. Remember the last two times Missouri had the ball, they drove the length of the field one time with 10 plays, the next time with 14 plays, and they, they tightened up in the red zone. This time, they get Chase Daniel off the field with a three and out. As a result, OU figures to have perhaps even a half field to work with here. Cross it, reaches over to the right for the snap. Short of the 50-yard line. 
Now it takes Missouri Hop, and it's about right there. 50 yards to work with here. So Missouri, number one in the country, trailing Oklahoma by one. Jim made his commitment when he knew that he was going to die. He committed to finding a cure when he knew there wasn't going to be a cure for him. That's the beauty, the, the genius of what Jim did. He turned the ultimate loss into hopefully what will become the ultimate win. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Call 1-800-JIMMY-V or log on to www.jimmyv.org and donate. Best starting field position of the night for either Oklahoma or Missouri. Sooners have a first and ten and Brown the Sooner running back. Play fake Bradford. Moving to the right picks up his running back for a first and ten. Well, Bradford wanted to get the ball downfield, but instead he shows the patience, gets to the outside, and has a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Brown up against the linebacker, Christopher. Had a, a simple check down by the quarterback. They cleared out the rest of the secondary, one-on-one -on -one underneath, running back Chris Brown against Brock Christopher, who just could not stay step-for-step step with the tailback. 18 more yards for Brown. Only a couple of yards that time for Chris. And let's take a look now at the Pacific Life game summary. Missouri, as we have said, all half, threatening a couple of times, but settling for a 28 and an 18 yard field goal. And then Chris Brown, who Kirk has been talking about, 7 TD in his last six games. And Daniel is stuffed. And Daniel is stuffed. Granger made a big play there. Also, Lofton, Chase Daniel frustrated, and has this where we are now at 7 6 Sooners. Bradford is 10 of 13 for 120 yards. More showing blitz. Picked up. He was hit on the release. Incomplete. Pass intended for Iglesias. Brad Bradford will continue to take some shots. He's going to have to continue to take shots because his receivers, who are very talented, are isolated one on one. That's one of the ways to slow down a defense, and he is very fortunate at that time to get the ball off because Shulak was coming off the edge from his blind side. Third and seven. Comes the blitz again. Picks it up. Malcolm Kelly at the first and ten. Beautiful release by Bradford. This is what coaches call zero coverage, where you just take a chance. There's nobody back in the back end. It's one on one. Malcolm Kelly and Bridges, the corner. Who's going to win that battle? Missouri brought the blitz. The protection was there. And Kelly got to the inside. And again, a nice throw there by Sam Bradford. Toss play. Patrick back on the field. First and 10 across the 10 yard line for the Sooners. I'm going to continue to talk about this, but this is what happens when you have a little bit of balance and you're able to dump the ball off to Chris Brown and throw the ball to Kelly. All of a sudden, Missouri's defense backs up, and all it takes is just a small little angle for that offensive line of Oklahoma to get the block that they need to create a seam for the very quick and explosive Alan Patrick. This time, Van Alexander steps into the hole. It's hard to run into a 10-man box. Missouri <laughs> has everybody at the line of scrimmage. As good as Oklahoma is up front, and they average 6'5", 322 pounds, one of the more physical offensive lines in the country, but you've got nine or 10 guys up there. Makes it tough.
A uh, second ago, Gresham is to the right of the formation. They're going to run the toss with Patrick. Patrick cuts toward the five. Second effort and out of bounds at around the three. You got to love Alan Patrick. When he gets on a roll, he starts to feel it. He is a very physical back for 196 pound tailback. And Kevin Wilson, the coordinator, telling him, they're going to be seven or eight or nine guys up there. You've got to be able to make a guy miss and run over another one. Huge, huge play for Mizzou's defense. Brown. Touchdown. Chris Brown, the touchdown maker, in the end zone again for the Sooners. Heck of a drive there, Brent. Nice job of mixing up the play calling. And at the end, it just comes down to who's more physical in the trenches. And a good seal block again by Joe John Finley to open that running lane up that time for Brown. Here is Hartley. And folks, this goes back to the OU defense. Three and out. They wound up giving Bradford a 50-yard field to work with. And the offense strikes for the second time. 14-6 Sooners. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number three, Herschel Walker. From his first college game, Walker immediately took the SEC by storm, leading Georgia to the 1980 national title. The Bulldogs were 33-3 with Herschel in the backfield, and he was voted consensus All-American in each of his three seasons. IBM getting it done. 33 and 3. And Herschel number 3 on the list. And New Year's Day on a Rose Bowl. We will announce the grand champion of the 25 greatest players. Folks, you are free to make up your own list, okay? <laughs> I'm not sure that I agree with everybody. I'm not sure you do. So go ahead and make up your own list and then email it to Kirk Herbstreit. And yeah, Kirk. No, I, don't I know. love that. <laughs> How about the red zone tonight? We talked about it at the very beginning of the broadcast. Which team would capitalize once they got inside the red zone? And right now, both have scored. But Oklahoma, two for two with two touchdowns. And Missouri's had to settle for the two field goals. Difference in the game. There's that Oklahoma swagger. If you want to bring it number nine, come on after us. Not ducking anybody. And I'm telling you, I'd have been surprised if Stoops had done otherwise. Let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. And I see Lewis Baker, linebacker, shaken up on the field here on the uh, coverage team on the uh, 15. And uh, let's uh, check with the Aflac trivia question. I wonder where that duck has been. All right, Oklahoma has won four Big 12 championships under Bob Stoops. Name the four starting oh. quarterbacks who led those teams. All right, Mr. To... Herbstreit, the oh, clock man. is ticking. This is my, this is my tick, tick, chance tick, tick, here. Tick, 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 All year, tick. it's been 1934. You finally get into my my wheelhouse here. Jason White. Tick, 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 like that. Nate Hibble. Yeah, tick, 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 like that's the tough one. Tick, tick, That's tick, the tick. tough one? Well, maybe not. Tick, 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 uh, tick, that clock. Paul Thompson? Uh, oh, yeah, good one. Good you one. like that one? Yeah, good one. You're going to get the next oh, Josh one. Josh Heifel, talk to me. Woo! Right, all right. Mr. Herbstreit beat the clock. I was ready, man. He was yes. out. Bro. We were taking his halftime sandwich, giving it to the stats man, George Hill, over here. George. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Under Bob Stoops, four different quarterbacks who led those teams. And the folks down at Norman Way, man, they sure remember this quartet, huh? Heupel, now an assistant. Mm. Think about this. There's four right there. And if they're able to go on tonight and win this game, 
uh -huh. and win five Big 12 championships in the last eight years, it would be with five different quarterbacks. That, that's amazing to do. A lot of times a guy wins it two or three years, but five different quarterbacks in eight years, it tells you the great job that Bob Stoops yeah. is doing in Norman. It's nice to see Baker uh, walking yeah. off uh, on his own part. The other thing, folks, if Oklahoma wins this game and they automatically qualify for the Fiesta Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, they may wind up playing Kansas. Now, mm -hmm. in the second half, we're going to have a live conversation with the Big 12 commissioner. They did not play Kansas and Oklahoma right. during the regular season. And we are told they can well meet up down in the Fiesta Bowl if they win this. And we will see what Dan Beebe has to say about that. First down and 10 now for the Tigers. Remember, Missouri went three and out the last time they had the football. Chase Daniel and the Tigers. How do they respond right now with the momentum favoring Oklahoma? Here comes the blitz. Ryan Reynolds helping lead the attack that time. And uh, Missouri has struggled, folks. There's no other way to put it against this OU defense. That's a six-yard loss. They are nowhere near the machine that they have been for most of the season. But right now, you have a defense from Oklahoma. That time, Gerald McCoy got in there along with the linebacker Reynolds. They are pinning their ears back and coming after Missouri, really being the aggressor. They are determined to prove that that first one was no fluke. Short of the first down as Lindy Holmes makes a fine stop on Macklin. Missouri's having a magical year. They talk a lot about their intangibles. They talk a lot about how this team is once in a lifetime when it comes to working with them. Only offense in the country to score over 30 points every single game out. They have plenty of time and plenty of firepower to get back into this game, but they've got to show some poise and composure here against this Oklahoma defense. Don't want to give it back to the Sooners. This third down, big for Mizzou. Here comes a blitz again, picked up. He got the first and ten. Snapped off a of beauty that time to Saunders. It's a great job this time by Oklahoma recognizing the down and distance and cheating their secondary up off of the blitz look. You can see, look how tight the look is from Oklahoma. I love to see that because that tells you that this Oklahoma defense is dialed in to not only the call, but the down and distance and cheating up. And that time it almost worked out for them. There they end around. Alexander's finally got the ball, folks. Out of bounds on the far side. Hasn't caught a pass, but Wolf has to track him out of bounds. Let's check in with Matt. You get you gave me a look like I say nothing. I I'm just I, I, I try to tell you, Kirk. I try oh, to tell you. Just me a cover, folks. When everybody tells you something, <laughs> everybody tells You're right. you one thing. You know about that. Run stuff. for them, Bear Hills. First down and ten. Here's Daniel. This is complete again, and now they're moving the ball across the 45-yard line, picking up a first and ten, refusing to go down, and there's a penalty flag on top of this. They might have been given Rucker the business. Well, it took five of them to bring him down. I, it looks like a little face mask, maybe. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Defense number eight, a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Reynolds. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds gets caught for it, but I'm just impressed with Martin Rucker catching this football and carrying about four or five Sooners down the field. And then finally, as he goes down, Reynolds came in late and pulled excessively on the helmet and on the face mask of Rucker. It's a great call by the crew to see that coming in late. From the 25-yard line, Daniel incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. The intended target, Jared Perry. No, I'm checking that Macklin getting back up to number nine. Chase Daniel showing a lot, of, a lot of determination. Just talked about how this, this building, this stadium, clearly favoring Oklahoma after they went up 14-6. He had just faced a three and out, and now they're coming right down the field, moving the football. Alexander was shaken up, and he's still on the sideline down here, so he's not on the field for Mizzou. Macklin 
Shows that end around. Option look and uh, nothing doing on that play. A strange, strange call, I think. And there is the injured wideout, Denario Alexander, down. And that, that big run to help get this drive started. I'm surprised we haven't seen Daniel in the five wide receiver look try to run up the middle with the big splits from the offensive line. He had a lot of success on that, about two or three drives. Third down and 11. Timeout. Didn't like the look he was getting for the play call. So they will come over and talk about it. It has been a tough, frustrating half for Chase Daniel and the Missouri offense. Still yeah, a, I hear. Still a couple of timeouts. And uh, Chris Spielman, what are you uh, seeing down below? Well, this particular drive, Chase Daniel's doing a better job of keeping his eyes down the field. When he was getting pressure, he was checking out the pressure with his eyes. And the other problem they were having is just standing up here close. Missouri wasn't getting any separation between the Oklahoma defensive backs and their wide receivers. They're doing a little bit better job now because they're in two minute drill and Oklahoma's being a little bit softer. But they're doing battle down here, boys. It's awesome. <laughs> hey, yeah, Chris, you know, I've always wondered why didn't you become a coach? I always thought you were a natural. Your daddy loves to coach. What about you? Well, I, I've always been a fan of yours, Brent, and I wanted to someday work with you. And here's my dream is coming true. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have him along with his third and 11. Pressure running right and a reception going down was Franklin got it first and ten on the catch working against Smith nice work by William Franklin and nice work by Chase Daniel I thought he might think about early running the football but Oklahoma thought the same thing they brought pressure up the middle Daniel gets to the outside has the ability to get on the move and then a great throw away from the defender where Franklin could go down and make the catch terrific difference that Austin English number 33 makes in the game you saw him come free on that replay stands and delivers Macklin and he is across the five yard line now the clock becomes important they've got two timeouts plenty of time two timeouts in this offense 36 seconds and eternity look for Rucker 82 because of the size it's off to the left the inside they better hope it's an eternity chase daniel in zone this time touchdown mizzou what a big moment folks this is for missouri the number one team in the nation really now with time running down they finally score a touchdown and don't settle for a field goal what a way to go into the intermission. You, you want to get to the national championship game? You're playing for the right to get to the national championship. You're in your conference championship. You get down 14 to 6, and you have to show the ability to answer, and that's what they did. Is it too early, Mr. Herbst, to like go to, for two? I'd like to see a team kick the extra point. I think it's too early. There's going to be a lot, of, a lot of points scored in this game. Yeah, you don't want to be chasing it, man. And Wolford is such a good kicker. That's a... It's a gamble. A lot of guys will say, don't take it if you don't have to. But let's see what happens. They can make it double. Reverse the throw from Macklin. Oh, yes. What a great call to go for two. How good was that? Oh. <laughs> Rucker around. You know what? They, smile on the coach's face. You know, he doesn't back away. Brent, they caught him twice in the game. And Norman on the double reverse. This time they go double reverse and they end up throwing it. This is the touchdown. Look at the big splits here by the offensive line. In fact, the right tackle, Colin Brown, is way to the outside, and that's exactly where you have the ability to try to find a seam, and eventually Chase Daniel does it. That was a play right before the touchdown. Colin Brown moving to the outside, opened up a seam, and Chase Daniel finds it and gets into the end zone. But I, I didn't necessarily agree with Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, early in the game to go for two, but the call, the double reverse, they burnt the Sooners twice in the red zone in Norman. The Sooners were all over it to stop it. They were not expecting the double reverse pass to Rucker. So Macklin throws off the reverse. Rucker hauls it in for the two. 
And the speedster can do a little bit of everything. So a reminder, the Chevrolet players of the game will be coming up later, and uh, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Fielded at the 21-yard line. Patrick. Let's go back to this touchdown. I want to show it again. The huge splits by this offensive line allows, and of course, the right, right tackle, Colin Brown. Watch Chase Daniel. He's empty. There's just nobody left on the inside of that defense. And because of the, the margins there and how wide the offensive line is, out to the it's outside it forces that defense to get separated and with Chase Daniels quickness he's able to sneak in there for a touchdown and for Jeremy Macklin that's a third pass he's thrown this season and he's completed two of them and uh, OU says we'll take a deadlock and go on inside the locker room but working against the clock at the end of the first half Chase Daniel a Heisman Trophy candidate Gives the Tigers a shot, and let's go down to Lisa with Coach Pinkle. Well, Coach, uh, with the exception of that last drive, you had difficulty getting into the end zone. What was the difference on that last drive? Well, we were we were in clock plan. Our clock plan, we changed the tempo up quite a bit. We threw some completions, uh, made some plays, and uh, fortunate enough to get that two-point conversion. Now, about that two-point conversion, the guys weren't necessarily with you on the decision to go for it until they saw the play. What made you decide to go for it with so much time left in this game? Well, our charge told us to go for two at this particular time, and uh, we thought we had a good play on, so we went with it. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck with that now. Thanks. All right, Lisa. Deadlocked at 14. Good one in San Antonio. Now let's send it to New York. John Saunders, Craig James, and a Flutie man for the Capital One Halftime Report. Take it away, John. We welcome you back to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Missouri and Oklahoma knotted up at 14. Mizzou, the number one team in the nation, trying to get to the BCS Championship game. And, uh, Herbie, what a big drive at the end of the half. Oh, an amazing drive. If you, if you think about Oklahoma started to take control of this game on both sides of the ball. They're up 14 to 6, about 3 minutes, 41 seconds to go. Chase Daniel leads the Tigers down the field. 10 plays, touchdown. They decide to go for two. You and I thought it was a great decision. They get the two-point <laughs> conversion, and all of a sudden they hit the halftime locker room, and they have the momentum and a tie game. The Sooners get the ball to start the second half. It'll be very interesting to see how the momentum is affected throughout this second half. And red zone again, I'm going to keep saying it. Who's going to get the touchdowns? And Chase Daniel showing a lot of moxie tonight for the Tigers. If you weren't with us earlier, uh, again, the only high school game that Chase lost at Carroll High School up at South Lake outside of Dallas was down here as a junior. Back when they won the state championship, that loss was to Katy, Texas. Down here at the Alamo Dome, and uh, like Kirk told you, the Sooners will start the second half with the kickoff. Jeff Wolford with the ball on the tee. Fielded at the two by Iglesias. The wide receiver brings it out to about the 20 yard line before they take it down in our Pacific Life. Game summary uh, shows you the numbers here Kirk, from the first half. And uh, you can see the passing yards up for Sam Bradford. I think that, that theme will continue in the second half because of their ability to throw against Missouri, trying to take away the run. The penalties by Oklahoma very alarming. Nine penalties in one half. Missouri, after having nine against Kansas last week, only one in the first half. Alan Patrick opens as the tailback. Bradford to Kelly. Kelly, seven yards on that first down pass. So if I'm Oklahoma, I want to get Sam Bradford in a position to throw the football. Throw the football and then get back to running with the physical running style of Alan Patrick. And they're the two quarterbacks and the nights that they have had. The numbers don't indicate how well they have really played. Bradford off to a pretty good start, 11 of 15. But Chase Daniel has done a lot with his legs to keep plays alive with his scrambling and also scoring a touchdown. Neither team has fumbled either, so we haven't had a turnover. Bradford complete as he slides it through to Joe John Finley, who's been active here 
Yeah. If I'm Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator, went through 30 minutes of football, had a chance to have my whole offensive staff study Missouri and what they tried to do. Here's Kevin Wilson. What I saw is a Missouri defense that's being aggressive and tenacious and loading up to stop the running game. I will continue to throw with Sam Bradford until they decide to back off and then I'll start to run. On first down, deep down the near side, Kelly, and he overthrew him, so it'll be second down and 10. Bridge is locked on to Kelly about halfway down the field. I think he might have gotten away with a little contact there. And the only way he could prevent Kelly from going right by him was to get a little bit physical. I think the football was in the air. Missouri and Bridges caught a break there. Gresham and Eldridge both on the field. Page back in the tight end look for the Sooners. Cheney, one of the wide outs now. Second down and 10. Came back with Patrick. And this will bring up a third down here for the Sooners. Every game is big. Just start the game with your drive, your opening drive, and then to get into the second half, especially after you make your adjustments to try to come out and see what you can do with that first drive. And with the score being 14 to 14, every possession matters. Every opportunity matters. And staying on the field on third down matters for both these offenses. Manuel Johnson in motion. Need five. Fourth down, and OU forced a punt on the first drive of the second half. That time, Bradford looked off to his left and thought he had a man that he wanted to throw to, but just great coverage by Missouri. And by the time he came back to Kelly, Bridges was all over Malcolm Kelly, and Bradford had nowhere to go with the football. Macklin is back deep again. Patrick will try to get downfield on him. He's one of the gunners. He's at the bottom of your screen, off to the right now as you look from behind. No. Man coming right up the middle. They were sending everybody downfield. Macklin just going to let it bounce and uh, it'll roll dead inside the 15. But we've got a penalty flag back around the 41 yard line here on this punt. Now they're indicating holding here on Missouri. During the kick, holding against the receiving team, number 19. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line from the end of the kick. First down. Big field position penalty against Gary Pinkle's Tigers. Carl Geddes. True freshman. Remember Chase Daniel, one of the ways he has tried to come back and attack Oklahoma's athletic defense is not only throwing the football, but when he's had chances to move around in the pocket and also run up through the, the middle of that Sooner defense. Five wide. Spread the field. Rush four, picked up, far side, and complete. Tommy Saunders working the sideline on the far side. Chase Daniel looks all the way from the left and comes clear over to the right side and throws an accurate throw to Saunders. What a throw, a long throw, right where Saunders can make the catch. Going to work on Marcus Walker. Who's now down here on the near side for the Sooners? Here comes that reverse motion again. Macklin trying to get a seam. Makes the most of it for a couple of 
yards and we will check in down below with Lisa. Well Brent Chase Daniel will have one less weapon to work with this half. Uh, Denario Alexander you saw the trainers working on him at the end of the half they were working on his left knee and as the seconds were winding down in the first half they actually carted him out and into the locker room. I was able to catch up with him and ask him if he was OK. He said I'm not sure I hope to come back. But as we were coming back for the second half I spoke to the head trainer Rex Sharp and he said that Denario Alexander is out for the rest of the game. So indeed as uh, Temple the running back is brought down by Lofton the middle linebacker. And let's take another look at this because Alexander relatively quiet. They finally brought him around on an end of round and he was forced out and uh, that's where he suffered the injury. Coming off a huge game last week and with Alexander down you're going to have to see not only Saunders and Rucker but also guys like Jason Ray Greg Bracey and Jared Perry. Some more inexperienced of the receivers are going to have to step up with their opportunity. And Earl Goldsmith has joined the fray. He's number seven. He's out wide to the right. Here comes the blitz. Picked up. First down, Macklin. Forced out of bounds by Baker. So that, check that. That was. Now you talked about the blitz Ryan Reynolds and Curtis Lofton come right up through the middle of that defense and Missouri does just a good enough job there to give the quarterback Chase Daniel time and if you give Chase Daniel time with the plethora of receivers that he has he's eventually going to find an open target. 144 yards tonight all purpose yards. Broke the freshman all purpose. Here comes the blitz again. Hit on the release and just gets it off in time. But what a blow. Macklin picking up nine. Baker on the blitz. Got in to chase Daniels face mask that time. And Macklin might be shaken up. Well, they've come with blitzes, but a lot of times it's been to try to set up off a zone blitz, so they're dropping into coverage and being conservative. This time they blitz, and because the offensive line's trying to release and get downfield, it was very easy for the defense to get in there and get after Chase Daniel. Acklin checks out here. So Ray is now one of the wideouts. Second down and two. First and ten, Temple. <laughs> Just knowing that Tony Temple is back there and I know Jimmy Jackson and I know Derek Washington and Goldsmith all these backs have ability but there's something different about the senior Tony Temple when he's in there and the confidence that he exudes to the rest of his teammates that his team believes in him. Rucker split off to the left side Chase Daniel high to Franklin and incomplete. They almost caught him that time with the defensive end. Jeremy Beal lined up as a defensive end to rush the quarterback. But again, trying to confuse Chase, they dropped him back into the flat. Last time these two teams played, Oklahoma did that and they turned it into interception opportunities. Macklin back on the field. Second down and 10. And the handoff on the end around. Breaks free. Macklin on the near side is out of bounds at the 25 yard line. 17 more yards for Macklin. This is how Missouri's offense tries to keep defenses that are overly aggressive honest. The linebackers have been blitzing a lot up the middle, so they'll challenge that speed up the middle with their own speed to the outside. And by getting wide, he outflanked Oklahoma's defense. And when he hits a seam, Jeremy Macklin picks up huge yards. Play fake, move the pocket to the right. In trouble and sacked brilliantly by Jeremy Beal. What a fine tackle that was by 4-4. What a future that this young man has as a freshman. How many times in the Bob Stoops era have we seen beautiful defensive ends that have the ability to run and chase down a quarterback? This time Beal has the angle and he does not let Chase Daniel get to the outside of him. First sack by either team tonight. Loss of 10. Derek Washington. And timeout has been called, I believe. Hang on here a second. Did they get it? The penalty flag is thrown. Against so, the offense, 12 men in formation. 
The five yard penalty. Still second down. Pinkle is upset about it. Last week had an illegal substitution and he agreed after looking at the uh, tape that they were wrong that they didn't get a man inside the uh, the letters so after the penalty the ball back on the 40 yard line they have to get to the 15 for a first and 10 this is second and 25 three receivers Brent up to the short side of the field up to the top rush four. Pocket collapses. Da Daniel made the most of it for a yard or two. Jeremy Beal again applying heat. Beal has come alive here in this series. His last few plays was lined up to the left the previous play. This time he's lined up to the right of the defense, and he has that speed. He can come down and gets Chase Daniel that time. Boy, he has a, just a bright future. Austin English not on the field with this defensive front. He turned in some big moments in the first half, but now they're operating without him. Three down defensive linemen. Rushing five, couldn't pick him up. Here comes Lofton after him and took him up. Curtis Lofton, the defensive player of the year, coming free. A little cheap talk between the defensive and the offensive players of the year in the Big 12. Give Brent Venables a lot of credit because he continues to bring the blitz. This time it's the linebacker Lofton. He doesn't buy the play action. And look at the speed and acceleration from the linebacker at 240 pounds to bring down Chase Daniel. Brent Venables just keeps coming after this Tiger offense. Six punt heads for the end zone. They'll come out on the 20 yard line. Well, we have talked about the Big 12. They've sent eight teams to bowl games in six of the last seven years. What about this year? We'll talk to Big 12 Commissioner Dan Beebe when we come back. This telecast available on ABC HD, presented by DLP HD TV. So the Sooners take over on their own 20 yard line and we welcome Dan Beebe and his first year as commissioner of the Big 12. I like a commissioner with a sense of humor. He came in and said I'm sorry I can't give you guys a good game. Well I know <laughs> it's it's tough. I'm trying to manage it but uh, we'll see how it goes the rest of the time. <laughs> they keep it with Brown on the field. You know Dan I have mentioned the possibility in the first half and the, the folks down in uh, Arizona have talked about it that if Oklahoma wins this game they go automatically to the Fiesta. Now they're thinking that maybe they bring Kansas in which is two big 12 teams there's nothing against the rules they didn't right. play doing it. What would the conference think about that. Well I think it'd be spectacular to have a big big 12 uh, event there in the in the desert and of course we play before that in the insight bowl as well. Well of course we don't want to count out the Missouri Tigers folks because if they win Kirk and uh, Dan they've got bigger game and uh, what do we make Kirk of the fact that with time running out West Virginia is still behind Pittsburgh well, if that game holds up which is put Full that one right up there on the offense number 79 the five yard penalty still second down put that one right up there with one of the biggest shockers of the year and we've had a lot of them if West Virginia ends up losing to Pitt and right now they're down 13 to 7 it makes it interesting to see the final of this game between Oklahoma and Missouri because if Oklahoma wins and West Virginia loses then it's a scramble to find two teams to play in the national championship. Oh somebody will step up. Folks. Oh yeah. <laughs> Second down and 15 hard run by Brown and uh, finally they uh, swarm him up. Commissioner, I, I, for the Missouri contingent out there. I've heard from a lot of their fans that say, you know, if we win, we're in the national championship. If we lose, we might not even be in the BCS. What, what do you say to their fans and to the system if Missouri is somehow left out of the BCS after the year they've had if they lose tonight? Well, that's a tough, that's a tough issue. And, and you know, of course, with Kansas, the team they just get, got beat yeah. uh, or they beat last week going in, perhaps. I'm sure that's hard. But this is this is what it's all, it's all about. It's about competition. I got the sense these guys wanted to play this game no matter what, no matter what's at risk. Well, here is a third and six now for the Sooners. Pockets clean. 
Got an open receiver, and he's got it. Manuel Johnson's first reception of the night, and a penalty fly. Dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense. Late hit out of bounds, number three. The 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. One of the first big mistakes, middle mistakes we've seen from this Missouri defense. Third down and long, a lot of crossing receivers. The tight end Grisham, Kelly's crossing. When that happens, it takes a lot of time, and it's a great job of reading this defense by Sam Bradford, taking what they give him, and again, making a big throw, and it's a late hit by Terrell. So on first down, they come with Patrick, middle opens, he breaks free, still going, 15, cuts inside the five-yard line. job by the left side of the offensive line from Oklahoma. The first time they've really asserted themselves. Watch the kick out down here, and then the backside guard comes around, Brandon Braxton. What a job, what movement, and look how they open it up. And how about Alan Patrick and the quickness and acceleration that he has when he gets into the secondary. Moore saved the touchdown, but a 40-yard run makes it first and goal. Brown pounds to the three-yard line. Dan, as we watch um, OU threat here, how many teams will the Big 12 send to bowls this year? We'll have eight teams in bowl games this year. That's amazing, again, that this conference produces so many teams that are bowl out. Well, and, and you said there may be a question about who's the number one if, if these happen, but I will volunteer one of our teams to play in the uh, national championship <laughs> game. Not a problem, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, there's no, no problem with that. I can get one of them to play in it. Hey, Dan, thanks so much for visiting with us, okay? Well, I'm honored to be here, and I really appreciate all that you guys do for college sports. Thank uh, you. You've done a great job. Thanks. Appreciate it. Second down and goal now for the Sooners. Brown is stopped again by that tough Missouri D. That was Van Alexander. You see, you, you see Bobby Stoops pointing to the he look, he's kind of looking at his back. Brown saying, bounce that to the outside. Bounce it to the outside, and you have a touchdown. We saw Oklahoma's defense tighten up in the red zone twice, forcing Missouri to kick field goals. Now it's Missouri's opportunity here to try to stop the Sooners. It's a big third down for both teams. You see that Alan Patrick has checked back in the game. Pleasant offset would be the lead blocker. They'll try that on the left side. Here comes Patrick in zone. Touchdown over you. That's like you, see, you see him say to Chris Brown, that's what we're talking about. Get it to the outside with our speed, and we're going to score a touchdown. Gutsy call and a confident call to run the football here. And this is exactly what Bobby Stoops wanted to see. Bounce it to the outside, use your speed, get to the corner, touchdown Sooners. Chase Daniel, get the ball back after the, after the kick. Trailing by a seven as Hartley tacks on the extra point. The number one team in the nation, Missouri, trails favored Oklahoma by a touchdown in San Antonio. Ah, uh, with the holiday season fast approaching, don't you wish that this season could just continue? <laughs> one and two trailing right now. Missouri and West Virginia. The voters watching, the computers getting ready to whir, and who knows where we'll head next. All I can tell you is folks in Columbus are mighty happy along about right now. Columbus. They got insurance work. Columbus, Athens, Los Angeles, Blacksburg, all over the country. Baby. LSU. Do not forget yeah. LSU. Let's yeah. go to Matt Weiner in New York.
And Matt Stanford 20 Cal 13. Michigan should dial Jeff Tedford. See what he's got going. <laughs> Here comes Chase Daniel. And he throws that middle screen. Nine yards to Saunders. Well, here we are, folks. Here's the latest edition of Chaos Incorporated. <laughs> latest. Or who are you going to boost up there now? Georgia sitting on the couch with Ohio State. Wouldn't it be something if both of them, both of them use that back door to get there? Well, why not? It needs both to be mentioned teams. that four and five aren't even in their conference championship games. And would that penalize them based on the way people might vote for Virginia Tech, LSU, and USC? Deflected, intercepted. Picked off on the ricochet. And the big man, Curtis Lofton. This could be a killer. I think Daniel thought there was interference out there. And remember, it was Curtis Lofton in the first game against Missouri who had a big play, a 12-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. This time, it's off a tip pass by Martin Rucker, and he almost takes it to the house again. This guy always seems to be around the football making big plays. Curtis Lofton, three for a loss, the interception. And again, if you weren't with us, and here's the handoff now, and Brown slashes to the four-yard line. Lofton, 138 tackles, more than Rocky Kalmas or Ted Lehman had for Stoops. And Bob told us he's the most productive linebacker he's ever had. And against Missouri in that first game, he had 18 tackles and that 12-yard fumble return that uh, Kirk spoke about for a touchdown. Well, the instincts are amazing sees everything just a step faster than everybody else and that time he happened to be in the right place at the right time the ball was thrown high to Rucker who's usually very sure handed bounced off his hand and just went up in the air and there's Lofton waiting for it. I think coach Pinkle said it well he was wide open. And that was the word from upstairs. Touchdown. Jermaine Gresham his 11th touchdown of the season. And for the first time tonight, a two touchdown lead for Oklahoma. Now, Connell Davis, number two, gets lost here. I think Missouri's expecting the run. Look at the linebackers stepping up into the line of scrimmage, and Grisham's able to easily get to the back corner where there are no Missouri defenders. They came up to take Brown out. And it opened up the play action. Nice call by the Sooners. Hartley tacks on the extra point. Folks, Missouri has not beaten Oklahoma since 1998. Gary Pinkle has never beaten Bob Stoops. Now right now, OU has the number one team in the nation in trouble again. Toby Keith is happy. <laughs> Oklahoma fan. Country and Western star. Mojo Nixon plays some of his tunes, folks. I want to tell you, Mojo on that serious radio, he's the best Western DJ in America. Mojo loves football and NASCAR. That was a big time wrestler down there, wasn't it? <laughs> J.R. Ross down there. And now, sir. Hartley with the ball on the tee. Coming out of the 20 yard line. Take us back, Kirk. Uh, Curtis Lofton's been all over the field throughout the entire season for the Sooners, but we want to go back to this last time these two teams played earlier this year in Norman. That was a turning point in the football game. I know the ball was dropped, but presence of mind to pick it up and score a touchdown. And then tonight, always in the middle of the action, the ball is tipped on a wide open Martin Rucker. There's again number 40 for the Sooners, making a big play to set up that touchdown by Grisham. All right, big drive now for Chase Daniel and Missouri. He's answered the bell all season long, except in Norman. Middle. Got Rucker this time. 
hanging on for a first and ten. Let's check it down below with Lisa. And Brent, remember when we spoke to, to Curtis Lofton earlier this week, he was a die-hard Cowboys fan, Oklahoma State all the way when he was in high school. Thought he would end up playing for Oklahoma State, but uh, he was in the lunchroom one day in high school in the cafeteria. Coach came down and said, Oklahoma State's on the phone. They want to offer you a scholarship. He got to his coach's office. No one was on the line. He called, tried to call back twice. He couldn't reach him. Within an hour, Oklahoma had called. He said, you know what? I should probably wait and make a decision. Ultimately, he decided on Oklahoma. Yeah, and he had a couple of relatives uh, who were former Sooner fans, and uh, the Sooners are forever thankful, and there's a flag. You saw the little push in there out of bounds. And that's the biggest negative of the night for the uh, Sooners, but they've been able to overcome double-digit penalties Dead here. Ball, personal foul, late hit on the defense, number 16. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Baker. It wasn't necessarily a malicious hit. It was just the timing of the hit by Baker. Lewis Baker needs to know better than to just a little shove here on Temple. The fact he was four yards out of bounds. That's right. Right that nothing to do with it. Doesn't have to do with how, uh -huh. how physical it is. <laughs> that, that's, that's driving I got to look crazy. up malicious in the rule book there. That you <laughs> <laughs> First down and ten, folks. West Virginia in trouble. Missouri in trouble. Daniel goes far side, complete. 12 yards and a first down, Saunders. Look, I thought he might throw to Jared Perry underneath, who was wide open on a kind of a drag route, but he decides to come all the way back to the right. We've seen him do this a few times tonight. It gives you an idea of the arm strength that Chase Daniel has. Do not be fooled by the lack of size as far as the height of this quarterback. He has plenty of arm strength to make every throw on this field. First and ten, hands it off to the speedster. Franklin got nine that time. Holmes making the stop on Jeremy. For those of you not familiar with Missouri and the way they score, they score fast. I know it's a challenge against this Sooner defense, but a characteristic that we've seen from Chase Daniel and this hurry-up offense is that when they get down or when they have the lead, they know one gear. It's called fastball. Up to the line and call the plays and get the ball down the field. Set the screen with Rucker. Rucker running wide inside the 10 down at the six yard line almost. And it'll be first and goal. That's where Harris got him out of bounds. Last two on this possession, we've seen Rucker get his hands on the ball, design screen. He cuts it back to the outside. And I'll tell you what, Martin Rucker, for a guy as big as he is, he's got some acceleration. He is really a receiver that they flex out, even though he's listed as a tight end. How impressive is this drive by Daniel and Missouri? Didn't hang his helmet, did he? he jumped right back into the fray, trailing by two touchdowns. Inside handoff now, and the Sooners are ready for that play. Stop made at the nine yard line by Coleman on Temple. It's tough sledding to run the football down inside. You get inside the 10 yard line against Oklahoma, and the creases in that defense are very narrow and they're closing fast. That's the red zone that we've talked about the entire game. They've had opportunities and settled for field goals. They have to score touchdowns. Second down, swing, Oklahoma is all over it. Derek Washington didn't have a chance. Number 40 led the charge. You got to give Brent Venables in this Oklahoma defense a lot of credit for the adjustments and the speed and just recognizing their keys and flying to the football. There isn't any hesitation. They close in in a hurry on this Missouri offense. Every time they get inside that 10 yard line, the Sooners are flying to the football. Look at the Sooners come off the sideline as they get ready for the fourth quarter. The entire bench empty. Super califragilistic expialidocious. That's the only way you can describe this season. This is unbelievable. You know what? I got to give a tip of the cap to you. You said before that game started, whenever everybody says it's a given, look out for the other direction. You called that, my friend. I've been on the other Good side. Call. What? <laughs> Incomplete. You know, I lived through Villanova, Georgetown. I lived through North Carolina State. I've seen it. I've seen it in the NFL. It's amazing, Kirk. 
third down they come up with an incompletion you and I were talking at the break is it four down territory yet yeah. as fast as this offense can get up and down the field I think right now he's got a kicker that he has confidence in he's never missed a kick in conference play don't mean to jinx you Jeff but I think he's going to try to take the three points as opposed to going for the touchdown here he ran one fake last week this will be a 32 yard but I agree with you Kirk as to uh, what's about to happen here He slides it through. Still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. So here we are, folks. What do you make of this? You all at home, <laughs> look at this. What's happened to the ones and the twos as you look back through everything that has transpired since October 6th when Stanford stunned the world by beating USC. And then you can see Kansas was number two last week and they lost to Missouri. So, uh, Kirk, I suppose number one, Missouri loses this game tonight. Yeah, who finds a way? Certainly, I think Ohio State will be one of the teams. Yeah, right? yeah I, I, if you're real quiet, I think you can hear a celebration right now in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Ohio State would be the team right now with Pitt beating West Virginia right. to be in. If this game holds on, right, the BCS <laughs> is going to implode. Oh, I love chaos. This love is. It. Their worst nightmare in the history right. of the 10 years. This is as bad as it's ever gotten. Who well, are you going to put in there? Well, but, but you know, bad uh, is in the eye of the beholder. Right. I, I mean, say bad, I mean oh. chaotic. I mean, is, this, <laughs> yeah. is, this is his. Let the voters and the computers sort this all out tonight. Uh, and, uh, no problem. You know, Georgia's got a shot. Georgia. LSU's going to say, wait a minute, folks. We deserve to go ahead of them, but yes. they lost twice. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, and, uh, Georgia, Virginia Tech, but they've got the big loss how, to LSU. If you look at how hot Georgia and USC are playing, do people vote based on how well they're playing right now? Georgia and Kansas didn't even get into their conference championship game. Now there is a penalty on this. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. Virginia Tech and LSU. If you're LSU, you're sitting there saying, throw us back in there. Free kick out of bounds against the kicking team. Oklahoma elects their option to take the ball at the 35-yard line. First down. Well, you can take a look at them, folks. Kansas is number five right behind Georgia at 11-1. and one. Virginia Tech won the ACC today. LSU, and remember, they beat Virginia Tech pretty handily down in Baton Rouge. So uh, they got a and USC coming on strong. Yeah. And, uh, the hottest team to the Sooners. I mean, <laughs> I know what a lot of folks are saying. And here's a handoff. Stoops would like to eat about five minutes off the clock. There's a penalty on this play. There's Patrick's one to the 40-yard uh, the line. Herbie, I know what a lot of folks are saying right now tonight. They are saying we need a playoff to sort this out. And I I know where Holding they're coming from. On the offense, number 71. The 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. But the truth of the matter is we're not going there. Never. Never. You know, it's just no. not gonna happen. And uh, for a variety of reasons and you can make of that whatever you will, and the columnists who write about it and get Wasting all, your time. Yeah, exactly. The, the, yeah. the closest thing you're going to get maybe is a plus one mob. Exactly. And you may be able to sort that out a little yeah. bit. But we shall see. It has been a fun three months, hasn't it, folks? We'll turn the stage back to the New England Patriots and the NFL Network. First and 20 now. And this is Brown hey, back man. on the field for the Sooners. Another penalty flag. Missouri looks like they're going to give the yards right back. Face mask going to be called here on Bridges 21. He locked up on Chris Brown. Missouri down by 11 points cannot afford to make mistakes like that. Personal foul grabbing the face mask on the defense. The 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. I mean, you just had a holding call by Oklahoma. Brown looks like he's going to run out of bounds to stop the clock. And right there, Bridges locks on. I don't know if that's a personal foul, but he definitely had his hand on the face mask. 14.25 to go. 28-17. Gary Pinkle's Tigers trailing it by 11. And Gary Pinkle and his defensive coordinator, Matt Eberflus, have to load up the line of scrimmage. 
you got to beg Oklahoma to throw the football because they're going to try to take as much clock off as they possibly can. Here's Brown. Crosses the 45-yard line. And uh, Dr. Pepper stats update looks like this. In first downs, the Tigers have 23 to OU's 11. You, you can see the big penalties for Oklahoma. The, the thing that does not show up there is the one turnover tonight for Missouri where Lofton made the interception. Big, big turn of events in this football game because it led to a touchdown, but it also really affected the momentum of this stadium and of the Oklahoma Sooners, the kind of the swagger that they gained from that play. There was movement. There's a penalty called, and this looks like it's going to be a free play. It looks like the defense was in the neutral zone as Iglesias is thrown out of bounds now. It's been a hard-hitting Big 12 championship game. San Antonio tonight. Sixth title game in the last eight years for Stoops in Oklahoma. They've won four or five, losing only to Bill Snyder and Kansas State up in Kansas City on a bitterly cold night. Offside on the defense. That penalty's declined. Yards is enough for a first down. Cross midfield to the 46-yard line. If the Sooners wanted a, a penalty here on Christopher 34, just a little bump there. <laughs> Fans reacting here in the stadium to the replay. Missouri, who's relied on their offense all season, now has to have a big play from their defense. Bradford has plenty of time, goes deep, got a man wide open to the 15-yard line, Jermaine Gresham. This is part of the risk by loading up, expecting that the Oklahoma offense is out there to kill the clock. It's not real fancy, but it allows the quarterback to have time off of play action. Look how the, look how the Missouri defense reacts to that. And they're out of position because they're expecting the Sooners to run the football. A good call and the right time to make the call that time by Kevin Wilson. Got Missouri out of position and threw right over top of them to the big game. 29 yards. And that time, the defense won that particular battle. That was Ziggy Hood, a fine defensive lineman. Had a good year for Missouri, making, making the stop. Eating time off that clock, bringing it down now. Sometimes I have to continue to remind myself that Bob Stoops is playing with a freshman quarterback in Sam Bradford. Tonight, nothing spectacular. 17-23, 205 yards with a touchdown, but just demonstrating all year such good poise, and it's on display again tonight. And, folks, most of this team is back next year as Brown makes his way to the nine-yard line. As you look through this lineup, Kirk told you that Bradford's a freshman. Wide receivers, juniors, freshmen, sophomore. The entire offensive line will be back next year. Joe John Finley is a senior now. I'm excluding those who might opt to go to Sunday football a year early. But if you look around this roster, if you were going to get OU, <laughs> this is the year you better get them because they're going to be loaded starting next season. Well, offensively, you lose Alan Patrick and Joe John Finley, but you get DeMarco Furry back. You get DeMarco, DeMarco Murray back DeMarco from, from the injury. A, yeah. Sensational. He's, He's a home run hitter, folks, and they're playing without him here tonight. Brown to the four-yard line, and uh, I dare say that if DeMarco Murray had been in the OU lineup tonight, they would have been bigger than a field goal favorite. I know some of you are wondering, how could the number one team be an underdog? Well, when they played in Norman, Oklahoma was a 12-point favorite down there. And the perception of those who put the numbers together, as you see the young man Murray, a home run hitter, is that Oklahoma had the speed and the way they could defend them and the fact that they have owned Missouri actually through the years. I mean, they just show up and they seem to find a way to beat the Tigers. And uh, this would be huge for the Boomer Sooners if they could finish this one off. Brown is stopped at the four yard line. It was 
these last few plays just just like they've done earlier just basically challenging Missouri up front I think this offensive line from Oklahoma gained a tremendous amount of confidence in their performance last week against Oklahoma State they were challenged their manhood got challenged a bit by this coaching staff and they showed up and put together a great game and dominated Oklahoma State up front I think they came into this game with that swagger back that I think they lost against Texas Tech Patrick back on the field the clock moving toward 10 minutes play fake Bradford dropped a touchdown pass gets away from Brody Eldridge six slips through his fingers William Moore the safety was put on an island he either had to make a decision to come up on Eldridge which he did not do or sit back in the corner on Grisham the tight end he sat back on Grisham making a very easy throw for Bradford who who was had an open receiver in Eldridge and Eldridge simply dropped the football now third and goal for Bradford in the center. Timeout. Called by OU. So will it be back to back weekends that numbers one and two go down? Could happen. Remember, LSU was number one just a week ago and they lost. Okay, okay, I heard from all my friends over in Hawaii, all the islands. What about the Warriors? Aren't we the only unbeaten left? Get on ESPN 2 tonight, 11.30 p.m. Eastern. Can they handle the Huskies and march it? Don't they have an argument? They're the only team still standing. Yeah, they have an argument to get into the BCS. <laughs> I don't know about the championship Come game. on. I'm, I'm thinking up here more and more. I think, what do you think? LSU. LSU. Yeah, I think they LSU. They win the SEC. How can you choose Georgia? I don't know. Bradford, touchdown. Boomer sooner, baby. Number one in deep trouble now. Finley. All week, Bob Stoops had an edge. He said they're talking up there in the Midwest like this was a fluke down here in Norman. He talked about it to all the writers. He talked about it to the broadcasters. I'm sure he talked about it to the team. He said, let's prove. Let's prove that we were indeed a better football team. And as of right now, folks, you can't argue, Gary. How fitting for Joe John Finley. Two touchdowns last week and another big one tonight. Three touchdowns. The last three Oklahoma possessions. Hello, Fiesta Bowl. Uh, Macklin's back deep. They need to strike and strike quickly. The last two Oklahoma kickoffs, by the way, have been touchbacks. And... Uh, Partly getting stronger and stronger and reality probably starting to set in here for the number one ranked team in the country. In case you're wondering, the number one team since the BCS was instituted has been an underdog on two previous occasions. This will come out on the 20. One of them was a championship game in the Sugar Bowl, Florida State. Lost as number one to the Gators. Let's go to New York and Matt. And uh, Matt, congratulations to Dave Wanstead. Dropped it'll be uh, it was actually behind him, so it'll be second down and ten. Hey, let's bring in Chris Spielman down below, and and I want to go back on the Warriors, Hawaii, because Chris, you were over there with Sean McDonough. You guys were covering uh, the Warriors. You've seen them up close. What kind of a football team are they? How good is this Hawaii team? Well, I think they're as good as they advertised. Cole Brennan is not a throw that he can't make, and their receivers are on the same page. No receivers do a better job of reading coverage than the Hawaii Warrior receivers. Incomplete. It'll be third down and ten. Spields, I want to ask you, if this score holds up, West Virginia has already lost. Who, who do you think the two teams in the BCS championship should be? Well, if you go by the numbers, obviously Georgia should jump up there. But when you look at LSU and what they did today, a lot of people will be clamoring for that because they're the SEC champions. Georgia didn't even win the championship of the conference. 
How do you justify them going to the BCS national title game? Certainly a valid argument. Yeah, and two triple overtime losses. That's not bad. Kirk, what about you? Who would you I, vote for? I, obviously, Ohio State is in there. I think Georgia and USC, the two of the hottest teams in the country, but I agree. Georgia not getting to an SEC championship game. I would give LSU the edge. I would have Ohio State and LSU matching up in New Orleans. Daniel looking for an open man in trouble. Eludes the defensive tackle and steps out of bounds and throws it away. How about you, Mr. Musburger? Who, who would you put in there? All right, Carnac. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Hawaii. Who, do you, who are you going to put well, in? Well, the Buckeyes and, uh, you know, Hawaii. Oh, They're the really? only unbeaten team okay. left. On they, record. They answered it. Let them go play the Buckeyes. Yeah, they the deserve it. Plan? The heck with it. Yeah. Let them go play, man. <laughs> Heading to the islands soon? <laughs> I am, as a matter of fact. I am going over to see some of my buddies over there uh, with the family before I join up with you out west. But, you know, all those teams really have a good argument. I, I guess I really have to lean, if, if not to the unbeaten, LSU, because both those losses now in triple overtime. It took six overtimes for LSU to lose two games. Yeah. You stack that up. I think, I think voters should forget about last week's ballot and just look at who you think is most deserving right now based on their accomplishments throughout the year. You know, Lisa, she told me she wants Penn State in the Alamo Bowl. She's the only one who got her wish. Her alma mater is coming here to, to play, and perhaps in, uh, against Texas A&M. We're going to have to wait and see how this all shakes out if uh, the Big 12, as expected, gets two teams in and uh, Oklahoma closing in, and the other one figures to be Kansas right now. And down at the 39-yard line is Smith. So we will take a break. We will continue our conversation here as the favored Oklahoma Sooners lead the number one team in the nation, the Missouri Tigers. You're watching ESPN on ABC. I think what he said at the end, that cancer can take away his physical abilities, but it cannot touch his heart, it cannot touch his soul. And these three things will, will last forever. And I think that, to me, are, are the most powerful words of the whole speech. Ah, uh, somebody we all still miss. And join ESPN and the B Foundation in the fight against cancer. Call 1-800-JIMMY-V or log on to www.jimmyv.org. Bradford, hoping to bring still more time off this clock with the uh, Sooners in solid control of this game. Brown. Nine more rushing yards. They're starting to pound away here on the ground. 125 now. Remember, they did not have many rush yards early in this game. I, th I think we're starting to see the size of this Oklahoma offensive line to simply wear down Missouri up front. Again, they average 6'5", 322 pounds across that front line play four quarters of football against those big boys you start to feel it you got time out a few times Sam Bradford shows his youth there not paying attention to the play clock the timeout had to come from the sideline from the OU coaches well, here's our Pacific Life game summary, Kirk. Uh, it's, it's, it's been an interesting game. The first half, it went back and forth, and it looked like Oklahoma was on their way to a round early, up 14 to 6, but Chase Daniel fought the way, fought the, the Tigers back into the game, scoring a touchdown before the half. They went for two and they tied the game, but Curtis Lofton, another huge play against Missouri. Interception. Sets up another touchdown for Bob Stoops. And from that point on, the Sooners have dominated this football game. And of course, with a win here, they automatically qualify for the Fiesta Bowl. That is the, uh, the bowl that the Big 12 automatically goes to if they're not elevated to the BCS championship game. And uh, so many teams now join the argument tonight. And of course, the computers will start to whir, and the coaches, and the Harris Poll, and uh, It'll all sort itself out sometime tomorrow. I want to say something about this offensive line, Kirk, because you mentioned them, and I, I want to mention Brandon Braxton and Trent Williams, who played over at right tackle. One is from Youngstown, Ohio. Braxton Williams is from Longview, Texas. 
Brandon Walker a guard is from Detroit Michigan. John Cooper the center is from Fort Collins Colorado. Duke Robinson is from Atlanta Georgia and uh, the big fella over there load hold who comes in uh, 6 8 3 50 and he's from Colorado Fountain Colorado is uh, is where he's from so you can see that Oklahoma recruits nationally. When you think about those states that I mentioned and the teams that they go up against to recruit these youngsters it's a uh, it's a big big time program like uh, well like Texas the team that uh, they beat in that uh, showdown down in Dallas earlier this year and of course just a few years ago we were talking about the about the Longhorns winning the championship that great game against uh, USC and amazing you talk about the hot teams and uh, certainly Pete Carroll's got the Trojans rolling again. Yeah and you would expect if they lose out on getting into the championship game obviously they're going to go to the Rose Bowl right and you start to try to put together these BCS games and project out who might go where and it, you know you could start to you could start to pretty much align almost every game assuming Hawaii it's, hate to assume. But if Hawaii can beat Washington, you could, with the exception of the championship game. Well, you, you're teasing us now. Right. Talk, talk me through. Take me through all of them. Let, let's, for, for just for you and I. Yeah. We, we, because you and I, I think, you said Hawaii. For, for my argument, I say LSU. Okay? Yeah, that's So fine. Ohio State, LSU, in the for national the championship. championship game. Okay. You, then you would see an Orange Bowl with Virginia Tech and West Virginia right. down in Miami. Agreed. I think the Rose Bowl in Pasadena would probably be Georgia playing USC. Pretty good game. Uh, the Fiesta Bowl, I think, would be these Oklahoma Sooners taking on the Kansas Jayhawks. Right. All right. We have one more we got to work out. That's right. The Sugar Bowl. All LSU right. is now out on. of the Sugar Bowl. One on one. Penalty. Automatic first down on interference. No question about that Terrell interfered with Kelly attempting to make the pass as the Sooners probe deep against Missouri. You know there is a team we've forgotten about here tonight and that's Arizona State. On the defense they number can. three. The 15 yard penalty yeah. from the previous spot. Automatic Let's take another down. look at this uh, Kirk on this interview. I thought it was pretty obvious on the uh, far side. Yeah and, and it's again showing Kevin Wilson's aggressive nature close to seven minutes remaining in this game up by 18 points Missouri has everybody up to stop the running game of Chris Brown and I talked to the officials about pass interference before the game they said if the defender's head is not turned back he will get called almost every single time when it comes to interference down the field if he has not looked back to the football the one inviolate rule of the BCS no more than two teams from any conference will be going into the BCS Bulls therefore some of you are saying you know what about a team like the Gators well if you take LSU and Georgia in you got no shot to get the third team in which could in effect make Illinois eligible along with Arizona State Arizona, you know, if, Arizona, if Arizona State wins and right. up on Arizona right now they would have a very strong argument the other thing to remember is if Ohio State ends at one the Rose Bowl would have the first selection and if LSU for argument's sake ends up at two then the Sugar Bowl would have a chance to pull out because of losing their representative so at the very worst they could take LSU to come out and play USC I mean you talk right. about a hot bowl USC against either Georgia or yeah. LSU yeah huh you yep. might show up and watch that one with you. <laughs> <laughs> the granddaddy. Certainly, bring him in. Georgia actually played in a Rose Bowl. I think it was back in the 40s. LSU thought they were going last year. And then things got juggled around. Just like, you know, it seems like, Kirk, doesn't it seem to you like every year on this final Saturday, something crazy happens? Every year. We were talking about 1998. Remember that when you, you oh, were in this yeah, stadium? Right here. Yeah. Right? Kansas State, Kansas Texas State had it. A Michael Bishop starts it off, fumbles. They get into overtime. R.C. Slocum pulls it out, uh, throws the pass on the sideline. Stewart, was he the quarterback? Yeah, Brandon, Brandon Stewart, Stewart Sir was the Parker. quarterback. Sir Parker. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, St. Louis was the site of uh, big games in the Big 12. And uh, Texas. I tell you that we've had some we've had some huge upsets and uh, here tonight this is not an upset even though Missouri is uh, ranked number one and uh, there they are Texas over Nebraska roll right and uh, Priest Holmes actually scored the winning touchdown that night and there's the game we talked about 
the Aggies over Kansas State. And then Kansas State with Sproles enjoying a huge night on a bitterly cold evening, defeating Oklahoma. And uh, Oklahoma still wound up playing for the championship that year and uh, lost to LSU down in the Sugar Bowl. So it's third down and short now for the Sooners. Brown to the nine yard line. So uh, and Bob Stoops just continues the tradition at Oklahoma. But, but before we continue to uh, praise Caesar that much, let us not forget about the job that Gary Pinkle and his staff have done this year at Missouri. And all the great joy that this team has brought the long suffering Tiger fans. And uh, I know the one hump they can't get over is beat the Sooners. Since 1983, the Tigers have beaten Oklahoma only once. And they're not going to get it done here tonight, it doesn't appear, barring any miracle. And uh, we're closing in on, on five minutes. But uh, Gary Pickle and his staff uh, deserve congratulations. And should they not make a BCS, and again, Kansas. Uh, with only one loss seems to be the apple of the Fiesta Bowl's eye. Should Missouri not make it, uh, the Cotton Bowl would be a possible destination for them and uh, be a great bowl for this team. And I know how disappointed you are when you when you get this close, you know, to play. And it's so tough to get here. And I know that uh, these kind of seasons sometimes come around once in a lifetime, not just the results in the field, but when you talk to these coaches about the chemistry during practice and in meeting rooms how much joy they've had this year with this football team. It's a tough pill to swallow. There's a play fake. Bradford. Incomplete. Joe John Finley who's been active tonight as a, uh, as a receiver. Touched on Gary Pinkle and we've talked a lot in, tonight about the Sooners how young they are. The job that Bob Stoops has done now remember five of the last eight years the Sooners have won the Big 12 championship with five different quarterbacks. That, that, that just says a lot about the job that Bob Stoops and his staff and the continuity that they have been able to build up in Norman Oklahoma. Here's Patrick looking the clock. Twisted back in bounds. Howard making the stop for Missouri. So, uh, so Kirk, I, you know, I know you really look at this 24/7, uh, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll be. Uh, what time are you on the air with uh, with your show on ESPN uh, tomorrow? Well, the, uh, well, tonight we're going to bang around for a few more hours. Oh, no, no, no. I want to know when the official announcement is tomorrow. I have tomorrow we are we are on the air from. Uh, 8 to 11. 8 to 11. Yeah, so if you have three hours to kill tomorrow night. So I said 5 o'clock in break Vegas. I got every, it. every. <laughs> <laughs> we can put you up uh, on the bird. You yeah. can join us. <laughs> Give us some insight. Levi's and a button down and a feet up. We're going to watch the Bears and the Giants oh. late tomorrow. Make sure I got to, you know, watch you. <laughs> check you guys out later over there. And see what, who's going where. You talk about chaos. Lead. I mean, no I, fourth down. I can't remember anything like this. No, it's. That's what I said. This is the worst it's been as far as. Or the best it's been. Depending, well, depending on, on your, yeah, your point, point of view. view. <laughs> we've, never, we've seen a team lose, but I, I can't recall the top two teams in a BCS standings losing like this. Although 98, it kind of had that feel. Remember yeah, 1998, sure. UCLA, UCLA was number one. Miami, they had the hurricane Kansas game. State. Miami beat them. Yeah. Edwin Miami James UCLA. had the big game. So that uh, 98 was probably the closest thing that we've had, but not an entire season the way we've seen it this year. So here's Hartley for the field goal from the uh, from the right hash. Tech's on a little frosting for OU. Bradford, what a freshman year he has had for the Sooners. One of NASCAR's best there on the right, Carl Edwards. He was a student at Missouri. His stepfather teaches at the journalism school, and uh, he was with us last week in Kansas, and here he is tonight. I know it's been an unhappy night for uh, all the Missouri grads and fans around the country. They got so close this year, and he's a fine, fine young man, folks, and one of the talented, talented newcomers to the uh, NASCAR circuit. Won the Bush, and he'll be a factor in the Bush end. 
the Cup Series. That'll be the nationwide next year. Will be the uh, Saturday Series, and then of course it'll be the Sprint Chase. So now it is time for the Big 12 Conference update presented by Dr. Pepper. So we've got three teams in the BCS top 10. Missouri number one about to lose. Kansas number five coming in. Oklahoma number nine. Those two are the favorites to move to the BCS. Certainly two of those three are going. I'll Oklahoma automatically. Six Big 12 South title uh, for OU. Lofton the defensive player. I, I still, and we made the argument with the commissioner, I think it's unfortunate that Missouri beats Kansas. And because Kansas hasn't played Oklahoma, Missouri's left out possibly of the BCS. Just because they've already played Oklahoma. I would tell you something else working against Mizzou. 38-17. Mm -hmm. Works against you. 38-35 might be different. But beating Kansas and being 11-1. Don't, don't argue you know? that with you. That's it. all I'm saying. And Kansas came back in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And lost. Yeah. <laughs> Not my decision to make, and I'm happy for that, folks. I'll sit back and count the touchdowns that the Bears and the Giants put up late tomorrow. Bears guy, huh? Well, yeah. yeah, no, not. You know, I I loved that game the other night that the, the Packers and the and the Cowboys takes yeah. me back. That yeah. takes me back to the old days when they yeah. played that. It's a shame America didn't get to see that game. Oh, by the way, <laughs> don't take me there right now. Third down. Third and one. It's, uh, Boy, I'll tell you, you know what? And Chase Daniel is going to go after the defender, and uh, that was Jeremy Beal, who's played a heck of a game. I, I, you know, Chase Daniel does not want to see the Alamo Dome again, folks. This is where he lost his only high school game to Katy, Texas. And here tonight, four quarters away from a national championship game, and loses to Oklahoma. The other race that's affected tonight, obviously, is the Heisman Trophy. Darren McFadden and Tim Tebow were in the clubhouse as the leaders coming into tonight. But if Chase Daniel would have had one of those moments, he had a chance to pick up a lot of votes tonight. Now it would appear to be a two-horse race. Fair catch signal for on the 27-yard uh, line by Dominic Franks. Then when they show Ray up Lewis. flat. You show He's us drinking flat, you can milk this weekend. He's getting so ready for those rascals. Patriots. <laughs> Patriots. How are you, chalk player? You uh -oh. told me hey. that West Virginia could lose. You, you got that one. You started the day out by telling one. me this morning Les Miles was going to Michigan. <laughs> for crying out loud. First down in 10. Hurry, <laughs> my man. <laughs> I'm just telling you the Patriots aren't, they're not only going to win tonight, they're going to run the table. Only team that can beat them is the Giants at the end of the year, and that's if they rest. All their stars get ready for the postseason. <laughs> Killing me. You guys find the NFL easier than I do. I'll tell you that. I, <laughs> those guys get paid too. Uh, <laughs> read all that stuff. And one bad day, just a couple of deflections. Yeah, they had their bad day. I know they. I know they've made it look pretty easy so far, but I don't know. We'll see. Second down and six. Last minute here. My friend, and let's see, we'll hook up again in San Diego for the Holiday Bowl. We'll have a uh, we'll have a Big 12 team in that against the Pac-10, and then we'll go to the Granddaddy, and uh, we'll wait and see. Gutierrez is now on the field, and how about our Chevrolet players of this game? Sam Bradford, 18 of 26, 209 yards and two touchdowns, and Chase Daniel, tough night. But a great season and uh, didn't end the way he wanted it. But they took such a huge step forward with their first Big 12 North title and uh, certainly they'll be back in contention for that championship. Next year. Well, put your, your, your seatbelt on because it's about to get interesting. We know Ohio State's in. I'm telling you, I think LSU is in after winning the SEC between LSU and USC is my prediction. I give an edge to LS, the LSU Tigers. Stoops will take that bath every time. And uh, the Mizzou players are going across the field to shake hands. Gary Pinkle is out there with Bob. And uh, Pinkle now congratulating some of the players. And there's Sam Bradford. Automatic BCS bid. 
Their anchor bowl is the Big 12. Coach Gary Pinkle is with Lisa. Lisa? Coach, Coach, the game was tied at half, but the second half, a little different story. When did the game start to really get away from you? Well, we made a couple mistakes in there, obviously. Uh, you know, we got field goals in the red zone. They got touchdowns, and and uh, they, they played excellent. I think you got to give them credit. Now, you were never really able to slow down their offense. What problems were you having defensively slowing them down? Well, we get too many big plays. We give up big plays, and it's a penalties. Those things happen. And Chase, we've seen what he can do all year long. Why was he never really able to get comfortable tonight? Well, I think, you know, again, they, they did a great job of holding us to field goals. We got three field goals instead of touchdowns. And you give them credit. They're a very good football team, and, uh, and and we didn't uh, do the things we need to do to win. Now, you were telling us before the game that this was the biggest game of your career, so this has got to be, a, you know, one of the most disappointing losses of your career. What will you say to your guys in the locker room? Well, you got to play better. You got to play better in the second half. You got to, you know, made a lot of mental errors. We had penalties, some critical penalties, and, uh, you know, we'll be better at it next time. And Still, congratulations on a, on a great season. Thanks. Brent. Jerry Pickle, class act. He's done a terrific job up at Missouri. Hats off again to Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners, the 2007 Big 12 champions. They have won five of six. And Stoops remains unbeaten against Missouri. And now the Sooners will head to a BCS Bowl. And I want to remind you to tune in tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN for the Bowl Selection Show. Kirk Herbstreit will join Reese Davis and the gang. They'll sort out who's going where, including, of course, who will be joining us right here on ABC at the Rose Bowl game presented by City, January 1st at 4.30 Eastern time. So for Lisa Salters, Chris Spielman at Kirk Herbstreit, I'm Brent Musburger. So long from San Antonio, everybody. This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC.